podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is a Twit News special, episode 370, recorded Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. Google I.O. Keynote. Well, good morning, everybody. Leo Laporte here in studio with, for the first time in a year and some months, joining me in studio, Jason Howell. Whoa, this what is what it's heck? like to be here. There's a human in the room. I'm so out of practice. I forgot my key fob on the way. So I was I was like a chump. I was at the front door knocking. <laughs> going, Let me in. We were busy listening to the Blob <laughs> Opera. Also joining us via Zoom from New Jersey, it's Jeff Jarvis host of This Week in Google. Hi, Jeff. Oh, very nice. He's got his, what yeah. year is that? Google I.O. 19, the last one. Google I.O. 19, Jeff, the last you, one. Did you get the sweatshirt for Google I.O. 21? Yes, I did. Does Should it fit you? Off? Because it doesn't fit me. No, it's tiny. <laughs> okay, good. Tiny. Not just me. I just figured it was my tallness. But yeah. so It's tiny both ways. Yeah, it's ridiculous. As you're observing, Google skipped last year's Google I.O. Traditionally, this is an annual event for developers. Also traditionally uh, held in Mountain View uh, on the Google campus or next to it. Uh, it was at Shoreline Amphitheater the last few years. Uh, it's a it's a pretty fun event. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've had it also at Moscone Center uh, years gone by, but it was always limited to a, you know, a small number of developers. So there was always a competition to get in a lottery. Uh, and this time, like everybody else, they're doing it uh, streaming. In fact, uh, we don't know where from. We're hoping uh, to see a. They said Mountain View. Mountain View. Okay. Sundar Pichai will yep. be uh, joining us. They say us it's in a live from the campus. So I'm not going to ask what your predictions are, but I am going to ask what your wish list is. Let's. Mm. I, I think I know what Jeff's is on Jeff's list, but what's your wish list for today? Well, there will be announcements. We know that. A replacement he's, he's for padding. Me well, he's but padding his Pixel, Pixel book. book. <laughs> he, I want a new Pixel book. And you and you Won't want happen. a Pixel book that comes from Google, like Samsung's yes. latest versions. Not not good enough for you. That's where I'll be shopping tomorrow if they don't come up with anything. But but I would love one from Google. I would love a high end Google blessed. Yeah, that Pixel. Uh, that two thousand dollar Pixel book you were holding up uh, came out. Three, four I years think ago. Three years ago at this point, ago. and it's not yeah. two thousand quite. It was less than that. What are you? Uh, what's on your wish, li wish list, Jason Hell? Well, okay. Are we talking about like uh, w w total wish or reality wish? Well, like my total wish is that like I'm really excited about the Pixel Six uh, leaks that happened. Whether they were real or not, I think it's it shows that Google actually cares a little bit. And like you have said in previous shows, uh, that Google has maybe taken the last year and really kind of focused their efforts on showing that they care and putting that energy into design, both in Android 12 and into their Pixel lineup. Uh, my my wish list is that we find out a whole lot more, like my real, realistic wish list, is that we find out a whole lot more about kind of the design ethos behind Android 12. Uh, is, the, is all the stuff that we've been seeing, is that specific to the pixel layer or is that going out to everyone to a certain degree? I'm just looking for more information as far as Android 12 is concerned because the way it looks right now, Android 12 is a huge update, and I feel like so many releases prior to this, it's been kind of ho hum. Like there's there's features, but it's not like there's not a whole lot of excitement. And now I feel like there's a lot to be excited about. So I want more information. We know there will be uh, an event uh, this afternoon. It's in the featured content on the Google I/O page. What's new in Android? I'm kind of hoping that they will give us a public beta for Android 12 because we also know it's that... It's kind of time, I think, yeah. uh, based on their their scheduling. That yeah. would make sense. I mean, and often at Google I.O., that's exactly what they would do. They would release the beta. Suddenly, you know, you'd be in the different press quarters and everyone's like, well, did you flash the beta? Do you Are you running it? Oh, let me see it. You know, that <laughs> right. kind of stuff. Yeah, right. So it would make sense that they would do that today. What's new for the <laughs> yes. web platform? That's probably going to address Flock and Chrome. What's new in machine learning? Uh, Flutter. Mobile app development, Firebase, Google Pay, what's um, and then a replay of what's more in machine learning. You certainly, by going to the uh, website, will get some idea mm. of, wow, well, they want me to sign in, some idea of what's going to be uh, available at Google I.O. Right now, on whatever, in this, in, actually, this is from Los Angeles, um, we're hearing a musical band. This is traditional at Google I.O. You can bring up the Blob Opera performing with... What's the name of this uh, group, Jeff? Um, uh, Tune Yards. Tune Yards. Tune Yards. And uh, it's very futuristic music. 
she's a human, there's a bassist, and then there's the blob opera, which we've shown before, a Google experiment of singing blobs. She is Meryl Garvis. Meryl Garvis. And they're singing along with her. I mean, the blob opera is, is pretty awesome. Like when it's they fun. When they released this however many months ago, I, I had a blast with it. You had a blast with it on the yeah. show, and it became the intro music for that episode of That's This right. Week in Google. That's right. Uh, pretty what dynamic, this needs to be, too, awesome. is what she's doing. Imagine if you could collaborate with the blobs. Yeah, right. If they would mimic you or you them. Yeah, cool. totally. They're wrapping up, which means we're probably getting ready uh, to start right on time or a few seconds I'm from so 10 a.m. Pacific. Sundar I'm just excited about you guys off. being together in a room. I know. Just, I, I know. can't get over it. It's so weird. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not going to touch him. Here we go. Google <laughs> I.O. <laughs> yes, we've got an invisible wall between us. Look at that. Way back when. That's Brad uh, Fitzpatrick, isn't it? We do have a Google limited supply of CDs. The CDs, they're running. <laughs> they're so oh, I'm going to be talking to you today about... Oh, oh so young. Baby face. Yeah, that was in his Android days. My heart more than robotic androids dancing and singing. That's Chris Chavez. I hope they so, show Sir Gabriel parachuting in to the roof. Yeah, right. Got they always that. would that was, have a great countdown. That was always morning. part of the fun. Yeah, yes. the roof. Uh, Google I.O. I am thrilled to be here. At the Shoreline Amphitheater. This is the coolest Which thing. Which is right Excited next to Google, so it's not what's yeah. coming. You can build with the community. We want to give oh, you the tools. I miss being at Shoreline for this event. I hope that next year we're back there. Too. Good, right? There's always endless it's, discoveries. It's just so enjoyable. And so Jason, I think you should get a real Android tattoo. I think I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> you really right. would have voted. <laughs> Where can I get that that I can also cover it when I don't want people to see it? <laughs> we will mention if, if uh, our uh, commentary bothers you, you can uh, watch the stream live at uh, events.google.com. Yeah. But we will be talking a little bit over it. We'll try to listen also. Oh, and it looks like it is on the Mountain View campus with socially distanced viewers in their Adirondack chairs. This is the new campfire campuses that they're doing all over uh, Google Universe. At least, at least rain was not stage. in the forecast. It's beautiful. It looks like <laughs> beautiful. a beautiful day yeah. out of you. It says it's live, which is great. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back at I.O. We are coming to you live from our campus here in Mountain View. Of course, it's not quite the same without our developer community sitting here in person. It's another reminder of the times we are living in. The pandemic has brought us together in a shared experience for more than a year. But now, we are seeing that common experience diverge. In some places, pe people are beginning to live their lives again as cases decline. Other places like Brazil and my home country of India are going through their most difficult moments yet. We are thinking of you and hoping for better days ahead. COVID-19 has deeply affected every community. It's also inspired coordination between public and private sectors and across international borders. At Google, we launched products and initiatives to help one another through this time, to help students and teachers continue their learning from anywhere, to help small businesses adapt and grow, and to get emergency relief and vaccines to communities in need. We work closely with many nonprofit organizations around the globe, and you can go to the link behind me to support their excellent work. At Google, the most fundamental way we help is by providing access to high quality information. Authoritative information from 170 public health organizations around the world, including the CDC, the FDA, and the WHO. We're also focused on helping people find accurate information about vaccines, including the hours and locations for vaccine sites in many countries on Google Maps and Search. COVID-related information has been viewed hundreds of billions of times across our products and platforms. It continues to help people make decisions and keep their families safe. IO has always been a celebration of technology and its ability to improve lives. And I remain optimistic that technology can help us address the challenges we face together. So in that spirit, let's get started. At Google, the past year has given renewed purpose to our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. We continue to approach that mission with a singular goal, building a more helpful Google for everyone. 
That means being helpful in moments that matter. And it means giving you the tools to increase your knowledge, success, health, and happiness. Sometimes it's about helping in little moments that add up to big changes. Recently, we added 150,000 kilometers of bike lanes in Google Maps. We're also introducing two new features. First, new eco-friendly routes. Using our understanding of road and traffic conditions, Google Maps will soon give you the, give you the option to take the most fuel efficient route. At scale, this has potential to significantly reduce car emissions and fuel consumption. And hopefully by Second, default. Second, <laughs> safer routing. Powered by AI, it's an interesting Maps thing to start with. It's almost the, and traffic conditions. the least where yeah. you're it could start to with. It's a little break. recap. But it's known already. This isn't the yeah. first time we've heard about that. To 100 million of these events every year. But I guess Keyword helpful, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. Now, Google employees. Sometimes perhaps, it's about that? helping in the big in moments. The audience. Like Probably helping 150 million students and educators keep learning over the last year with Google Classroom or keeping students connected with affordable laptops. Yay! Chromebooks are now the number one device <laughs> Remember that in K-12 was educated. the Chromebook guy. He was in the Japan, Chromebook OS lead. In 40% of local governments before chose to deploy to Chromebooks to every child in grades one through nine. And here in California, we worked with the Department of Education to provide thousands of Chromebooks to students in need. One of the biggest ways we can build a more helpful Google for everyone is by reimagining the future of work. We have seen work transform in unprecedented Oh, I ways. hope they show the inflatable and it privacy. Is no longer just <laughs> and now robot. you too can have Over the inflatable the privacy robot. Co workers have been replaced by kitchen home. countertops and pets. With so many we people now working Google from Pillow, home, access to collaboration access tools to pets. has never been more critical. In 2006, we introduced Docs and Sheets to help people to collaborate in real time. A year later, okay, news we from added 2006. All of this is now part of Google Greatest Workspace, hits, man. Yeah. This which stage. builds on more than 15 years of creating ways workspace to work again? together. Today, we are announcing a new uh -oh. experience in Google Workspace Here we go. to enable richer collaboration. We call this Smart Canvas. Smart and Canvas. Tell you more. Spelled without the. Oh, there's, there's the. Yeah. Smart Canvas. Smart Canvas. <laughs> smart. Smart. <laughs> Super smart. Javier Soltero. We've seen before. Thanks, Sundar. And good morning, everybody. With Smart Canvas, we're bringing together VP the and content general and connections manager of that transform collaboration into a richer, better experience. For over a decade, Is we've been pushing be the, documents uh, away from being of Google just Wave? digital pieces of paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's all started. built up to this. Yeah. Inspired by the web. Turns out we should have had Smart Junior Campus Trapani on the show. Is our next big yep. step. <laughs> Let's see how a distributed team uses Smart Canvas to plan an important marketing campaign. You might be right, actually. <laughs> the launch date is just two months away, so Wadu starts a document and quickly adds a brainstorm table. Yeah, this With looks a lot like Wave. I hate to say it. He pulls in the right yeah. people and generates a checklist to assign action items. These are a little blobs These you can install into your workspace. connect the team's plan to people, workspace. dates, and tasks, making their live. collaboration richer and more effective as they drive toward their launch. Now that he's shared the document, everyone starts dropping in their ideas. Uh, yeah, as Wave much? As they continue much? to brainstorm, the assisted yeah. writing feature suggests that they change the word chairman the chairperson in the document <laughs> to avoid a gendered term. So New we fired him. writing oh, no, capabilities sorry. in Google Workspace <laughs> offer suggestions so you can communicate more effectively. We were taking bets on Sunday whether they'd apologize for what happened today, with AI ethics. No, no mention at all. No, no mention at least at the top. Faces of your team Might directly kind of into the collaboration later. experience the top seems to, be the to help them place share ideas like and solve problems together. It's still possible. Up to now, Adu and his team have been collaborating in the dock and scheduling separate Google Meet calls to review their progress. But starting today, you can easily present the doc, sheet, or slide you're working on directly into a Google Meet call. Now Adu can join his colleagues with just one yep, click. Wave. Mm -hmm. And this fall, 
were excited to bring meat directly into docks, sheets, and slides for the first time. This will enable teams like Adu's to actually see and hear each other while they're collaborating. So instead of screen sharing, you'll now, actually appear on the document. You you call share into the doc rather yeah. than the screen share the doc into the call. collaboration flowing like in the that? meeting. I'm confused. The team <laughs> used the new responsive voting table to see which ideas for the campaign are the most popular ones. Oh, With hack all that. the progress they've made together, Adu's initial document has evolved into a highly interactive, always up to date actionable plan and the team this is a view into Google's brain and how they operate the that's the power of smart yeah it really is right this is probably yeah. exactly two months uh, later how they it's time to launch the new on, campaign on the inside adu and his team are joining from offices from home and everywhere in between connecting across time zones and continents to help both office and remote teammates remain an equal part of the conversation no matter where they are we're launching Companion Mode in Google Meet. Companion Mode gives each of Adu's teammates in the office their own video tile so they can stay connected to their remote Even colleagues though and in the same everyone place. can participate in polls, <laughs> chat, and Q&A in that's real time. Interesting. As a teacher, that's really important. Otherwise, how do we have right. half the people here and half there? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same kind of yeah. Absolutely. Teammates can also be heard wherever they work. It's interesting to see Silicon Valley respond a year after the uh, pandemic have. began finally starting to put these Google features in. To automatically adjust I mean, I guess it takes time to ramp this yeah. sort of stuff up. But you, you know, it kind of almost feels like, well, it's a little late. But, but it's also potentially <laughs> anticipation for the way things are changing it's going forward change. or potentially right. changing so going forward. We don't really know. A couple of years out, we'll see how useful tools this like this are. that when Adu presents to the rest of his team, he can easily arrange people's faces to gauge their reactions while staying focused on his content. And his colleagues across the globe can follow along with live captions, even translations, into their native languages. Cool. That's, that's pretty neat. When Adu yeah. finishes his presentation, he doesn't feel separated by time zones or languages or the devices his team is using. Instead, with Google Meet's immersive experience, he feels connected and in the moment. So they said last week they're going to use Canvas as the new rendering Canvas mechanism for Docs. We're transforming collaboration so in Google Workspace. So we've kind of known about this then. Well, we've known about Canvas as a rendering okay. um, right. device. Now they've used that brand. Right. In Google Workspace was available only to our customers. But I wonder how much of be to everyone, Wave they're repurposing for students, this. To small businesses, to friends and neighbors wanting to stay connected. Oh, it sounds like it's not going to require together. Workspace. Stay tuned for more Wave is a philosophy, Leo. And now, sorry, I'll hand it back to Sundar. <laughs> it's not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> it's a world. View. It's a. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of being. Yeah. <laughs> oh, people in the white suits again. Thanks, Javier. Those were exciting examples of how he is so computer subdued. science and AI. So Google's can making make a point of the fact that this is live, whereas everybody else, including Google Apple and uh, Microsoft, has pre-recorded pre and taken yeah. advantage of that to make it, I think, uh, snappier and better produced. Let's see if this was a good uh, we made remarkable choice on Google's part. Well, I'll be curious to see what Apple will do for WWDC uh, in that regard. That last last year they did it the same pre-recorded. Pre yeah. search even further. Was great, we need to frankly. deepen our understanding of language and context. It to really do does help you get a more refined, exactly. focused presentation. Yeah. But I, I can also understand why Google today, might want to do this if what they're truly trying to do is replicate the experience of Google I.O. Right. Best in yeah. our native languages. Okay. Which they apparently so are. They've gotten so much better at translation here is more. Oh, translate yeah. the web. An incredibly ambitious goal at the time. Today, hundreds of millions of people use Google Translate each month across more than 100 languages. Last month alone, we translated more than 20 billion web pages in Chrome. With Google Assistant's interpreter mode, you can have a conversation with Kevin someone Mark's joining us in the chat room. Great to have oh, you, Kevin. Nice. And usage is up four times from just a year ago. While there is still work to do, we are getting closer to having a universal translator in your pocket. At the same time, even though we announced this machine learning have led years to ago. tremendous breakthroughs in image recognition. In 2014, we first trained a production system to automatically They've label been talking images. about this for a step change yeah. at least in computers' three years. understanding of visual information. 
and it allowed us to imagine and launch Google Photos. Today, we can surface and share a memory, reminding you of some of the best moments in your life. Last month alone, more than two billion memories were viewed. Image recognition also means you can use Google Lens to take a photo of a math problem. Wish I had this when I was in school. Lens is used more than three billion times each month. We can now be as helpful with images as we are with text. Machine learning has also improved how computers comprehend and communicate with human voices. As Javier shared, that's why we can caption conversations in Google Meet and why live caption on Android can automatically caption anything running on your smartphone locally. It generates 250,000 hours of captioning every day. Bre breakthrough technology from DeepMind called WaveNet increased the quality of computer-generated speech, leading to more natural and fluid interactions. WaveNet allowed us to create and deploy 51 voices across Google Assistant. Together, the advances in AI I just spoke about across translation, images, and voice improved the search experience for billions of people. They also enabled us to make a huge leap forward in how computers process AI natural ethics? language. Yeah. In 2017, we first introduced the world to Transformers, a novel machine learning approach for better natural language understanding. Transformers became the foundation for many other breakthroughs, like AlphaFold and BERT, which we introduced in 2019. BERT considers the full context of a word by looking at the words that come before and after, leading to one of our most significant quality improvements across Google Search, and enabling us to respond to queries with more helpful answers. In this case, realizing that the question was about parking on a hill without a curb. We have revolutionized the ability of computers to understand natural language. Yet, despite the incredible power of computers, there are still moments like this. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> this oh, is because language is, is endlessly <laughs> complex. We use it to tell stories, crack jokes, and share ideas. We continuously pull from concepts we have learned over the course of our lives. The richness and flexibility of language make it one of humanity's greatest tools and one of computer science's greatest challenges. If someone asks me if the temperature in the room is okay, and I say I'm freezing, they know that I'm very cold. I'm not, not 32 degrees freezing. Fahrenheit, zero Or if someone Celsius. says, what's the weather like today? <laughs> or maybe you are. <laughs> I don't respond. It's 70 degrees, sunny, and a 12% chance it's of It's a rain. nice day. I'd probably say it's starting to feel like summer. I might eat lunch outside. Boy, if Bert can understand that, that's sensible pretty good. Con sensible responses keep conversations going. But I hope Bert doesn't talk to me like allow that. Them to end up Hello, completely it's starting to feel like summer. Talking. Yeah. I, <laughs> I might eat lunch Even outside if, if I could. About the weather, we may end up I would agree. About football. Like, just, just give me the temperature. Today, that's what I'm I really excited want to, to share our latest break. <laughs> I'll make the decision on natural lunch language. Bert says, how about those Yankees? <laughs> It's a language model for dialogue applications. Ooh. And it's open domain, which means it's Lambda designed without to converse the on B. any topic. L -A -M -D -A. And while it's still in research and development, sounds like a new drug, we've but been it does. using it internally to explore novel interactions. For example, say you wanted to learn about one of my favorite pl planets, Pluto. Lambda it's already not a planet, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry to tell you, Sundar. <laughs> it's just a that? big rock. How did they miss that? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to a conversation. Calling Dr. Tyson. Steve Calling Dr. Tyson a few days he, he ago. He got that in there. My favorite planet. He got that I'm in so there. I'm so curious about you. Oh, dear. I sense your excitement. Ask me anything. Oh, dear. Tell me what I would see if I visited. You would get to see a massive canyon, some frozen icebergs, geysers, and some craters. It sounds beautiful. Sounds like science fiction. I assure you it is worth the trip. However, you need to bring your coat because it gets really cold. Yeah, coat's not going to do it. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> hey, I was yeah. wondering, have you ever had any visitors? 
Yes, I so have had some. Landa the role playing was Pluto. Is that, what, is that what's going on yeah. here? <laughs> yeah. That must have been exciting. Pluto's so the friendly. The that created New Horizons was very excited to see me. Planets are all really snobby, but Pluto is nice. Since I had not been oh, seen up is, close before. I don't know if this is a good idea. That's so great. What else do you wish people knew about? Well, you? for education, imagine. Is it? I wish do people you want knew kids that to I am not just a random ice ball. I am balls. actually a beautiful planet. <laughs> no, you're not. Well, if I they learn about. I am glad to hear that. Pluto and realize it's a planet. I yeah. He thinks he's a Sometimes planet. Sometimes people refer to me as... <laughs> well, so let him. Don't tell him. Shh. Don't, don't let him. it bother you. You're amazing. Thank you for the kind words. This is I an R&D product, not something Thanks for talking we'll be with able me. to use. Yeah, we'll see it about four Anytime, years. I am ever, always ever. open for people to chat. I hope you have a great day. Hmm. Okay. Tepid applause. This is the part that they edit out of the... Uh, I spent some time with Other my son conversing right. with Pluto, right. and it's magical. We had a lot of fun learning about space together. Let's Florence break down Ion what says, made robot it feel LARP. so natural. First, <laughs> that's that's pretty much spot on, actually. <laughs> we saw the model talk flow. about the New Horizon <laughs> spacecraft and the coldness of space. Lambda synthesized these concepts from its training data. These concepts were not hand-programmed in the model. Because none of the responses were predefined, Lambda answered with sensible responses, keeping the dialogue open-ended. Natural conversations are generated. That's how Eliza worked. I was just going to say, never take the this same like, path yeah, twice. Is Lambda next, is able to carry gen. a conversation no matter what we talk about. You can have another conversation without retraining the model. This Let's is all leading to uh, in-home robots that we converse with What's it like uh, on a deeper the level than our little Google Homes right now. It's quite the experience, actually. The wind blowing against you and the trees flying past are quite the sight. You never know where you'll land either. What's the worst place you've ever landed? Brad Sam's tweets if google a wanted a pub. demo talking to a cold lifeless being intact. i could have connected so them to my ex for a few minutes <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it was quite annoying <laughs> well that sounds awful were you able to fly again thankfully i was steven shanklin saying this is just plant pandering to the really pluto is a planet what crowd <laughs> what's the secret to a really hey, good hey use the platform you have yeah platform uh, well, Pluto has a lot of friend. connections to Google, I must apparently. first ask you to specify what you mean by good. Some may think it's how far it goes. Some may think it's how straight but, it goes. So it's what is, what is impressive? A paper airplane? What does this teach you? I don't get No, it's not about no, that. No, What's no, impressive no. is its ability to have a conversation. Yeah, the context yeah, and conversational nice capability. This is not necessarily a product. This is, this is showing yeah. contextual understanding. Because I hope it's not a product. Cue it's the creepy. Turing test. Yeah. Is yeah. it really a paper airplane? Well, or that's, is it a why, that's why it's saying I'm wow, a paper airplane, so that you that know it's a, a it's a machine responding to you. It was. I was actually thrown from a hot air balloon, believe it or not. That's so cool. What did the world look like from out there? It's actually quite it's impressive. It's actually a lot different than it looks from the ground. The world is so large with its vast it's, oceans it's and mountains. It's truly impressive. If it's it really puts things yeah, into able perspective. Able to do this. Yeah, it's important to keep perspective. Hey, I'm wondering, do you have anything you want to share with the people that are watching at home? Now that's a tough I one. I do. How would it know what I that is? I just want them to know mm -hmm. that if the wind is perfect and you're made of the right materials, you can go absolutely anywhere. I, this feels written. This doesn't. Yeah, I, it does. That's it not. Really does. That's a little pat. Uh, they, they, they just trained it on, on TED Talks. shenanigans. Yeah, they yeah. trained it on yeah. TED Talks, yeah. About <laughs> any topic. It's amazing how sensible and interesting the conversation is. Yet, it's still early research, so it doesn't get everything right. Sometimes, it can give nonsensical responses. Imagining Pluto doing flips or playing fetch with its favorite ball, the moon. <laughs> Other times, it just doesn't keep the conversation go Actually, going. Actually, that's interesting. <laughs> At Google, we have been researching and developing language models for many years. We have focused on ensuring Lambda meets our incredibly high standards. It is the language fairness, company when you think about it. Accuracy, safety, and privacy. In all definitions. So from concept all the way to design, 
We are Natural making sure it's developed everything. consistent yeah. with our AI principles. I think, you know, remember, this is a developer conference. He's showing this to developers who understand how hard this is to do to yeah. and yeah. how amazing it is. It's not... Radically more it's not accessible saying to the easy. general public, can't, no. can't wait to talk to a paper airplane. <laughs> better conversational features into products like... You do this Google for my cat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you right? You could. We're also but they did, uh, not it, just generic cat, it's my cat. They chose inanimate <laughs> objects to represent and, and with right. the, yeah. the AI. Lambda is a huge He did mention AI principles in there, which... But it is still trained is only on an text. Unironic. And people communicate with each other. To they do it yeah, across the lack images, text, audio, and video. So we need to build models that allow people to naturally ask questions across different types of information. These are called multimodal models. Let's say we want a model to recognize all facets of a road trip. That could mean the words road trip. I'm starting to give up on a new pixel phone. Like I said, that was a, that's a long shot wish for today. I weather, doubt that's going to happen. Directions. But so you can imagine one day planning a road trip. that's the kind of thing they save for later, road. anyways. Yeah. To find so, a route it's normally with beautiful. In the last time it was announced in August, delivered in uh, the fall. You so. can also use this to search for something. I just mean if they're going to actually do it in the keynote, it's probably not going to be at the top. Show me the part where the lion roars at sunset, we will get you to that exact moment in a video. That's very cool. And it's that's yes. real. That's something, you know. You really Google do. Photos has always been kind of amazing. But later on oh, in the keynote, yeah. you'll One hear from Prabhakar about the progress we are making towards more natural and intuitive ways of interacting with search. Translation, image recognition, voice recognition, text-to-speech, transformers. All of this work laid the foundation for complex models like Lambda and multimodal. Our compute infrastructure is how we drive and sustain these advances. And tensor processing units are a big part of that. Today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, the TPU V4. These are powered by the V4 chip, which is more than twice as fast these are the processors in the cloud you can use as TPUs part of the TPUs are connected together platform. into supercomputers called pods. A single V4 pod contains 4,096 V4 they, chips. They've showed these before. And course. each pod has 10x the interconnect bandwidth per chip at scale compared to any other networking technology. This makes it possible for a TPU V4 pod to deliver more than 1x a flop. 10 to the 18th power floating point operations per second of computing power. That's pretty good. Wow. Think about it this way. If 10 million people were on their laptops right now, then all of those laptops put together would almost match the computing power of one exaflop. Equals what, 10 million laptops, This is laptops. the fastest wow. system we've ever deployed at Google, and a historic milestone for us. Imagine how much Previously, cyber Previously, to get an mine. exaflop, you needed to yeah. build a custom <laughs> supercomputer. But we already have many of these deployed today. That's the and important question, Jeff. How much Bitcoin will this give me? <laughs> Many of which will be operating <laughs> at or near 90% carbon-free energy. And our TPU V4 pods will be available to our cloud customers later this year. It's tremendously exciting to see the space of innovation. As we look further into the future, there are types of problems that classical computing will not be able to solve in a reasonable time. Quantum oh, computing quantum. represents a fundamental shift because it harnesses the properties of quantum mechanics and gives us the best chance of understanding the natural world. Achieving our quantum milestone was a tremendous accomplishment, but we are still at the very beginning of a multi-year journey. One problem we face today is that our physical qubits are very fragile. Even cosmic rays from outer space can destroy quantum information. To solve more complex problems, We're our next them in milestone a salt mine. is to create an error-corrected logical qubit. It's simply a collection of physical qubits stable enough to hold quantum information for a long period of time. We start by reducing the error rate of our physical qubits, then combining a thousand physical qubits to create a single logical qubit, and then scaling that up to a thousand logical qubits. God? At which point, what's we will a have qubit? An error <laughs> Lambda? 
<laughs> What's Today a cubit? we are focused on what enabling scientists and developers. That's a little callback to, to an old Bill Cosby routine about Noah. Computational resources. <laughs> but we hope to one day it. create an error corrected quantum computer. And success could mean everything from increasing battery efficiency. I'm of the opinion this is energy, highly speulative work, drug discovery, but so it happens more. because there's a lot of government the money flowing into the research. The roadmap begins in our new data center, mm. which we are calling the Quantum AI Campus. Let's step inside. Michael, are you there? Hey, Sundar, how's it going? Yeah, I'm here, and I'm excited to learn why I'm here, and I'm guessing oh. that's why he's here. Michael hey, Pena. Michael. Hey. I'm Eric. <laughs> Lead engineer here. Following I'd along like in the uh, one of the most powerful quantum computing facilities. Of hiring, in the world. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's this? Can I touch it? Uh, semi yeah, that's a quantum process. Semi famous celebrities. Are these All right. So, do you believe the fact that it says live, or are they saying this was? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what they mean by live. Because this seems pre-recorded. Oh, even the tiniest particles can disrupt their operation. Right. Which is why we work so hard to create the optimal environment to keep them stable. Right. They chose Michael the Pena because he's five foot seven. So he's not. He's not going to tower over these. Let me show you where the clean ones go. People. <laughs> so we built this campus to inspire all of our quantum mechanics and to show the world what the future of computing looks like. Good for you, dude. Look at you, dude. Thanks. You may remember him from That's Narcos. That's a cool lamp. Uh, it's not a lamp. All right. This is actually a cryostat. And you're looking and, at the uh, inside Fantasy of a quantum Island. computer. Wow, cryostat. I love that word, cryostat. I'm guessing people want to know, what makes a cryostat a cryostat? Eric? Well, everything you <laughs> oh, see God. here from the wiring, the okay. aluminum, copper and gold oh, metal stages have been chosen to create a cold and quiet environment for our quantum processors to operate. Right, right, right. And in English? Uh, it's a fridge for our qubits. Right, right. And how cold are we talking about? Uh, we approach near absolute zero, mm. 10 millikelvin to be precise. Wow. Which means that parts of our lab are some of the coldest Lord? places in the universe. What's a wow. millikelvin? Colder than Canada? Uh, yeah, colder than Canada. Colder than Canada. Well, it's not just temperature that's important. In fact, we want to remove all distractions from our qubits, right. including unwanted electrical and magnetic signals. Yeah, yeah. Who wants that, right? Well, let me show you what the final product looks like. Is this a cryostat? No beer. No, that's not a cryostat. What about this? Is this a cryostat? That's not a cryostat. No? This He's trying. is a cryostat. He's trying really hard. Nice. In fact, this is a fully assembled quantum computer. Yeah? So where's the keyboard? Uh, well, there's no keyboard, but it contains everything you've just seen inside and custom control electronics, all of which were designed and built by our team here at Google. Wait, 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 wait. Is this a Bob Ross? Is he on the team? Tell me he's on the team. He's not on the team. Oh, boy. Okay. Who? But this mural is our homage to Mother Nature. Did they hire somebody from Samsung? Nature, and we're learning to speak it here. It will enable us to run precise simulations that I mean, they, they could have broke out into a musical performance. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let me see if I get Google has okay, learned so absolutely really nothing. Smart, right, but they're really picky about absolutely the nothing from Apple and Microsoft. Right? But even then, they're like, even from no, Samsung. I don't want anybody eating any chicken. Maybe they've learned too much sorry, from Samsung. Okay, Apparently, know, comedy right? is hard. So I think that's and, you know, scripted comedy is even harder. Scripted comedy is really hard. And then you keep them there until they can tell us how to think like the earth. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, you're pretty close. And I, you know, I also have to point out that all of this is BS. Well, the, I, this stuff is I'm glad you're barely working. Okay. To date, we've reached the first milestone yeah. beyond classical computational capabilities. This is us. Yeah, we're here. Everything first you've seen step here today is what we're using to build many, to our next milestone, miles. an error-corrected uh, logical yeah. qubit. Right. And from there, we'll tile thousands of those together to reach our ultimate goal, an error-corrected quantum, quantum computer. computer. Right. That's my goal, too. Well, you're in luck. We're building a team to assemble all the right ingredients all right here in the Quantum AI campus that you just helped us. I think you. So thank you very much. <laughs> no, you know what? Thank you. And thank you for everyone uh, that's joining us. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of my favorite words that I just learned. Uh, one of them being qubits, cute qubits, uh, cryostat, right? And melon chips. the Cosby Sundar, joke, but that's it was a pleasure doing though. science with you. How many qubits? Mm, it's not. Not impressive. It was a pleasure yeah. doing science with you too, Michael. We recognize that building an error corrected quantum computer will be incredibly challenging. But solving hard problems and advancing the state of the art is how we build the most helpful products. At Google, we At know that our products can OS. only be as helpful as they are safe. And advances in computer science and AI are how we continue to make them better. We keep more users safe by blocking malware, phishing attempts, spam messages, and potential cyber attacks than anyone else in the world. And our focus on data minimization pushes us to do more with them. Two years ago at I.O., I announced Auto Delete, which encourages users to have their activity data 
automatically and continuously deleted. We have since made auto delete the default for all new Google accounts. Now after 18 months, we automatically delete your data unless you tell us to do it sooner. And this is now active for over 2 billion accounts. All our products are guided by three important principles. After 18 Which months of, of not using it? Advanced security infrastructures our products yeah, that's a good are question. secure by default. We strictly uphold responsible data practices. After you abandon your so account, a year and a half later, we'll delete it. Private by design. I think and he's saying for different products, maybe the, the data once it ages to, but you don't want your but Google Docs to no, be exactly, deleting after 18 exactly. months, so I have so a feeling must, this is not, how we apply these must apply to something else, yeah. Make every day safer with Google. Unless they turn into Yahoo, like your history and, and, maybe. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're, what you're worried about is history, 18 months, yeah, that, who cares? Yeah. You know, <laughs> in, in 18 months, uh, we've learned plenty. Thanks for that. <laughs> That's true. We believe that protecting your privacy starts with the world's most advanced security. One of the first female Seems engineers like at Google, every senior day vice we president hear about for another Google cyber Maps. attack that puts yeah. emails and personal data at risk. To keep our users safe, everything we build is secure by default. Each of our products is protected with advanced AI-driven technology. They're really swimming uphill on In this fact, one, I hate to say. Every day, it. Gmail yeah. automatically blocks more than 100 million phishing attempts. They Google promise Photos they're really back with, encrypts you know, 4 billion photos. And Google Play Google Protect runs security scans on 100 things. billion installed apps around the world. But the single most common security oh, vulnerability Maybe she'll talk today about the two-factor, because we're unclear passwords. what they have been proposing. Or Consumer two research has shown right. that two-thirds of people admit to using the same password across accounts, which multiplies their risk. We're not going to let you do that anymore. Ultimately, we're on a mission to create a password-free future. That's why no one is doing more than we are to advance phone-based authentication. And in the meantime, we're focused on helping everyone use strong, unique passwords for every account. Our password manager creates, remembers, saves, Effective and immediately. passwords Everyone's for you. Effective immediately. Everyone's account has two-factor turned on. Half a billion people. <laughs> Good luck. But we want to free everyone from password pain. This is the man who killed his account. That's why today <laughs> yes. we're announcing four new upgrades that make our password manager more helpful. Earn that badge. First, we're making it easier than ever to get started with a simple tool that imports passwords saved in other password managers. They not already have Next, that? we'll have Wait, deeper integration that... across both Chrome and Android. That sounds like a violation so of security. So your secure passwords go with you crazy. from sites to apps. Third, Automatic I mean, I password alerts you still will let you know if we detect the, any the of your saved passwords have become you know, compromised in a third-party breach. Import that, but. And lastly, Which all the password what I'm especially managers excited like about, this point. a quick fix feature in Chrome, where the assistant will help you navigate directly to your compromised accounts and change your passwords in seconds. That's our neat. continued investment in our password manager makes it just one of the many ways Google is the safer way to sign into anything online. Another core principle is ensuring that each of our products is private by design. This means continuously making thoughtful decisions about when, how, and why data is used in our products, including data that's used for ads. Our principles drive us to draw a strict line between what's in and what's out. For example, we never sell your personal information to anyone. We never use the content you store in apps like Gmail, Photos, and Drive for ads purposes. Not and anymore. we never use sensitive information to personalize ads, like health, race, religion, or sexual orientation. It's simply off limits. And while we've always believed that ads play an important role in supporting a free and open web for everyone, we're equally committed to making the web more private and secure. Through the Open Source Privacy Sandbox Initiative, we're collaborating with publishers, content creators, advertisers, and industry organizations like the W3C to develop new privacy-preserving solutions that will shape the future Walk. of online advertising. Making our products private by design also drives Google, us to build Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, all promote this idea of experiences while protecting third your private We're going to protect you against third parties because they have One all the first party information and they're not exactly. saying which allows us to use large aggregated data sets 
while guaranteeing that you know, your we know, but we're just not going to let anybody else know. Is right. not you the, trust us. Is not the answer. No one has scaled the use of you differential trust privacy us. more than we have. It's everyone else that you can't trust. The differential privacy is actually a term I first privacy. heard from Apple. We created the world's largest open source library of differentially private algorithms, which has advanced so many important fields, from cancer research to I'm not sure if Apple was the first to use it, but they were the first to talk about it. Another important technology is federated learning invented here at Google in 2016. It enables machine learning models to be trained centrally without any raw data leaving your device. And since building it into Gboard and messages, we've saved people countless hours of typing with helpful suggestions. Again, something Apple's always been talking about is on-device This on is just one of the ways we build for privacy everywhere that computing happens. Both in the cloud. And Google's, you know, Google's and saying, hey, device. we did this. We've right. been doing it since 2016. So, speaking you know, of devices, we just never talked about it. Exactly. And that's the problem. People design. still kind of we consider Google Android's as doing these core. things that they're saying we they're not, the but source. they're they're fighting an uphill battle to exactly. kind of undo or reverse it powers what people features already like believe. live caption without sharing audio data with Google or any other apps. No one else offers this kind of technically enforced, verifiable privacy. And the Android team will be coming up in a bit to share more. These are just a few of the ways we're building the most advanced privacy-preserving technologies into our products to keep your data private, safe, and secure. We know yeah, if you ask the person the on the street, is Android or, or, or is iOS more private? They're data. always going to say iOS. Google's privacy really is personal. taking pains to say, no, wait, so wait, wait. powerful right. privacy and security yeah, settings agreed. that let people choose what's right for them. You can find them in your Google account, which saw over 3 billion visits last year. We also know that some controls are most helpful when they're built right into the app, like when we added an incognito mode in Search, Maps, and YouTube. Today, we're announcing a few new controls that you'll see in our most popular apps. For example, people tell us they sometimes wish they could easily delete the last thing they searched. And we heard you. So now, just tap your profile picture to access your menu and immediately delete recent search history from your account. We're also working to make privacy controls more accessible in Maps. Now, when you see places you visited in your timeline, we'll remind you that it's because you turned on location history, which you can easily turn off right there in your timeline. And lastly, we're rolling out locked folder and photos, first on Google Pixels and coming to more Android devices throughout the year. A secure folder. Photos you add to this passcode-protected space are saved separately, so they won't show up as you scroll through Google Photos or any other apps on your device. This feature would have been helpful for me last year when we surprised our kids with a new puppy, and we needed to hide the photos before we brought Splash home. <laughs> as Sundar said, there's nothing more important than keeping you safe online. Building products that are secure by default, private by design, and that give you control is how we ensure that every day you're safer with Google. Just as we've engineered advanced computing solutions to protect your privacy, we continue to think about future advances in AI and their potential for making our products even more helpful. Not surprisingly, so much of what we do starts with search. And next, you'll hear more about this from Prabhakar. Or buffet only packaged lunches. Oh. <laughs> but, that, but a lot of umbrellas. Thanks, Jen. Today we are excited Prabhupada to share Prabhupada Ravagan our is Senior Vice President, AI, responsible for Search Assistant, Geo, Ads, Commerce, and Payments. Before. Opening up helpful experiences for you across Google Search, Maps, shopping and photos let's start with search this guy's is 20 years you know, ago like number two google was just 10 blue shot, links. Basically. yeah yeah connecting it's people to the information they needed in the millions of web pages out there in search since then we've continued to innovate to understand new forms of information like images videos places and more all of this is in pursuit of our mission to make information accessible and useful. 
As Sundar mentioned, early research with Lambda and multimodality is pushing the boundaries of natural language understanding. And today, I'm excited to share how we'll be bringing some of these research advances to Google Search with a multitask unified model, or MUM, as we like to call it. Mummy! Like BERT, it's built on the transformer architecture, but it turns up the dial. You see, MUM is a thousand times more powerful than BERT. But what makes Probably this technology groundbreaking Labs, Kevin Marks. is its ability to multitask in order to unlock information in new ways. Here are a few tasks it can handle at the same time. It can acquire deep knowledge of the world. It can understand language and generate it too. It can train across 75 languages at once, unlike most AI models, which train on one language at a time. And then, what makes MUM even Google more amazing is that it's multimodal, which means it can simultaneously understand different forms of information, like text, images, and video. Probably of all uh, the companies, except maybe Apple, Google is very much global. Types of queries it might be able to solve. And, the and so 75 really languages is yeah. a perfect example. Let me show you what yeah. I mean. You see that a lot in their leadership as well. Yep. Let's say you're an avid hiker planning your next adventure. You might ask, I've hiked Mount Adams. Google needs a lot more cultural Fuji next and linguistic fall. knowledge than Apple. What should I do yeah, absolutely. To In fact, Apple's a bad example. They, basically, yeah. Apple likes China. <laughs> the U.S. and China. <laughs> Maybe Brazil and India. But uh, Google is truly global. Facebook should wish it were a tenth, a hundredth. With its language understanding and Facebook has a global, has a global presence, but you're right. I don't feel like they're, they're culturally as, also as understand uh, aware. Prepare could include things like fitness training for the terrain and hiking gear for fall weather. Well, I think I saw earlier today, 80% of the virtual attendees of uh, Google I.O. are from outside of the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Here, it's highlighting that Mount Fuji This kind of understanding machine learning, as you might Mount imagine, Adams. is driven by but search and search ads. On Mount Fuji. So you might need a waterproof Because they want to know what prepare means so they can offer you, it would also give you pointers to go not just the information you want, but the ads you like how to prepare the right gear with articles, videos, and images from across the world. I'm not going to mention that, of course. Now, a huge limitation of accessing information is the language it's written in. If there are insights about Mount Fuji in Japanese, you might not know they exist if you don't search in Japanese. But MUM can transfer language across multiple languages to give you a richer, more comprehensive answer. But it doesn't stop there. MUM knows Mom. all. MUM is the word. Because MUM is multimodal. It can understand different types of information simultaneously. MUM's always so right. Now imagine taking a photo <laughs> of your hiking boots. MUM knows best. And asking, can I use these to hike Mount Fuji? Wow. MUM would be able to understand Again, the all content of the very image useful and the intent behind for advertising. Oh, yeah. Let you know that your hiking boots would just work fine. <laughs> Ridiculously and then useful point for you advertising. To a list of recommended gear in a Mount Fuji blog. According to the Urban Dictionary, a Google mom is a non-technical woman who has no computer skills, but it can use Google. Potential to solve more complex <laughs> that's questions. Her, okay, that's <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Okay. <laughs> urban Dictionary. <laughs> but we are already finding other ways to apply AI. I was to trying to find out what mom stands for. I'm sure he said, but I missed it. Take Google Lens, which lets you search what you see from your camera, your photos, right from your search bar. At every I.O., I get excited Around about the, world, the idea of Google, use the energy Google offers, over bringing all these tools together. And at every, every, every post-I.O. letdown this yeah. feature is, has been especially oh, useful well, like, for students. I guess they, Many it's of internal, be maybe, but, a language right. they're less comfortable with. So now, thanks to our lens team... Or what exists Zurich, doesn't exist for workspace accounts. <laughs> I, I really think this is a lot of it is for, uh, for advertising. Multitask so unified model. More than 100 Mom. Languages. That's what MUM stands for. For instance, you can easily Say snap again? a photo. Multitask of unified model. Unified model. Learning resource. That sounds like a retro name. Sounds take like they wanted to call it MUM. <laughs> they really, yeah. they really using were attached feature. to MUM. <laughs> Aku kelas 9 SMP. 
You know, maybe it's just Google I.O. <laughs> that they, they <laughs> show <laughs> this multiculturalism. Yeah. Well, they do, yeah, historically. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when you go to Google I.O., you see how truly multicultural yeah, yeah. it really is. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, the great thing is the developer clubs from around the world yeah. they yep. bring in. Yep. And the ones they show remotely. In the old days, we'd have a regular visitor from uh, Barcelona would bring 20 or 30 Spanish developers with him. Remember that? That's right. Yep. I wonder what the world's attitude towards Google is. It is the case that Google's market share in search is actually higher outside the U.S. Yes, it is. And we, I, there was, we had on, on Twig, we had a brand survey that still has Google as the most trusted brand. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, that's right. That's right. This is where I will argue that media are trying to create a hatred that right. hasn't really catched. Hmm. Well, yeah, and I think some of this, uh, you know, stuff about privacy is responding to something that maybe real people don't care that much. About. Right. But... European regulators certainly do. It's mm -hmm. always inspiring to see stories like Mamais. <laughs> and it brings to life the power of visual information, especially for learning. That's why we brought augmented reality to search two years ago at IO. Oh, no. To help okay, you explore you did. concepts it's visually true, up close but and in your my glass. Really, is anyone using IR yeah. at search? <laughs> I don't know. It's neat, I suppose. It's a gimmick. When many yeah, of us most, first started almost everything in AR in place, is. Yeah. families around yep. the yep. world yep. found joy in AR. From tigers to cars, people interacted with this feature more than 200 million times. Now, we're bringing some of the world's best athletes to AR so you can see how they perform some of their most impressive yeah, feats nothing right useful in front so of you. Far, is there? Beginning today, I mean, for, if you're a developer, you what, do you, what do you get your hands on? Juggles a soccer ball. It does feel like mostly a PR Naomi effort at this point. Pulls off a well, this, and this is the main keynote, and then so they have the really developer-focused right. keynote immediately follows right. this. That's right. So you can get a lot more of those kinds of details. True. Next. At least they, they tended to foreshadow that. Yeah, that's true, yes. The they haven't foreshadowed much yet. Let's take a look. So first you're going to go to Google search. Google search. And search yourself. Nobody's okay. so nobody does this. They, well, they do it and once. And, and they go, well, what's yeah, that button? And they push it. Scan no, the that's floor. Neat. Let's scan the area. Ooh, okay. and she's here. Nice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do so. Oh my gosh. She goes for the triple double. This is very accurate. I see all the details that I need to get back in the gym and work on. <laughs> Nails it. <laughs> Mobile's double double dismount. Pops up anywhere. Wow, look at that. Anyways, let's turn her so we can see it from the front. It sounds just like you're in the arena. Go down to 5%, little one. Oh, there she is. It's a bitsy Biles. That's the smallest triple double I've ever seen. <laughs> this is a very area. accurate rendition of simpler. what you do with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then tomorrow yeah. you forget about once. it completely. Well, yeah, Jeb Jeb in chat says 200 million people did this once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's, that's pretty accurate. No matter how many times I see that, I still think it's pretty incredible. Innovations like mom, lens, and AR are a part of our quest to make information more helpful. But information is only helpful if it's trustworthy and reliable. The world is constantly changing. Getting access to reliable information is particularly critical during times like the pandemic or breaking news. It's in these moments and so many others that people turn to Google. At our foundation, we design our ranking systems to prioritize high quality content. And for critical topics like COVID, we elevate information from expert sources. People come to Google to evaluate claims they've heard, whether that's in conversations that's with an friends important thing. or something they read about online. You need to talk more about how Over the they past year, expert. searches yeah, for, is point. it true that... Which I think is vital, like it's great. ...than how to bake bread. And that's saying something... Is it true that we how to web. bake bread? <laughs> We're building features... That That's make good. it easier for you to evaluate the credibility of information right in Google search. 
One of the Ooh. ways we're doing this is with about this result, a feature we launched earlier this year that makes it easier to check the source. Just this is Google uh, justifying snippets and knowledge graph and, and yep. knowledge cards and all those things that when it was first publishers indexed, are upset about. Your connection to the site is secure. Screw them. This context is especially important <laughs> if it's a site you haven't heard of and want to learn more about it. Oh, this Robert month, Murdoch's not happy we'll about that. We'll start rolling out about this yeah. result <laughs> to all English results worldwide with more languages to come. And later this year, we're going to add even more detail, like how the site describes itself, what other sources are saying about it, and related Actually, this is great, and, and I hope they teach this to, yes. to students. This is part of our ongoing commitment. It's yep. very useful for critical you the thinking. the highest quality of results and help you evaluate information online. When we understand information, we can make it more helpful to you, whether that be information on the web, from your camera, or from the billions of places in the physical world. And to hear more about how AI is powering our most helpful map ever, here's Liz. Somebody in the chair points out Sundar Pichai is tweeting right now, mm. which means not that he's tweeting, but his team right. is. Yeah. No, Thanks, he's right Kabaka. behind that big sign We're there. Yeah, he's standing there with his phone. I'm going to tweet Make this maps out. more helpful for the more than <laughs> one billion of you who use it every month. Advances in AI are helping us reimagine what a map can be. This year alone, we're on track to release more than 100 AI-driven improvements to give people richer and more contextual information about we'll the world the around maps them. maps again. Let me share just a few examples. <laughs> yeah, right. We've seen I've how helpful really AR well. can be to see how athletes I've had a couple of good experiences with the AR maps. I've had some. Three but, years ago, yeah. With live viewing Google Maps, we're the first ones to use the first one. If I lived in San Francisco, it might be a different story. <laughs> help see where to go. Yeah. With signs and arrows overlaid on the like real this. world. Today, we're still the only company who has AR navigation and maps in more than 100 countries, from big cities to rural towns. So far, though, Live View has been focused on navigation to help you easily get from point A to point B. But now you can also use it to explore the world around you. You'll be able to access Live View right from the map and instantly see details about the shops and the restaurants around you, including how busy they are, recent reviews, and photos of those popular dishes. This is possible because we match what your camera sees with the millions of businesses sharing rich information light. on Google Maps. In addition, there are a host of new features coming to what Live What was light? I missed that, Jeff. The first, tweeting. We're the tweeting. Yeah. Virtual street signs to help you navigate. I mean, this first hour has maybe it's no, it's no, it's a little more. I mean, Second, yeah, it is. We'll there's some interesting kind of you know in some cases higher level stuff, but there's really like you said, like there's the not a whole lot hotel. for like developers Third, especially, but indoors, for a lot of people to really kind of sink their teeth into it. There's that moment when the developers would applaud because it was something they could work in. Yeah, totally, totally. Indoor Live View will start rolling out in top train stations and airports in Zurich this week. Yeah, we've talked we'll about all of this Tokyo before on, on Twig. Pretty much. But AR isn't the only way we're bringing a whole new level of richness to Google Maps. We've heard from many of you Amazon that tomorrow. you'd like to have more granular information about your surrounding. That's why we're bringing you the most detailed street maps we've ever made. Take this image of Columbus Circle, one of the most complicated intersections in Manhattan. You can now see where the sidewalk right next to Trump the Tower. Crosswalks, see that gold thing? The pedestrian yeah. islands are. Something that might be incredibly helpful if you're taking young children out on a walk or <laughs> stay away from Fifth Avenue. <laughs> if you're using yeah. a wheelchair. <laughs> Thanks to our application of advanced AI technology on robust street view and aerial imagery, we're on track to launch detailed street maps in 50 new cities by the end of the year. It's nice. Having access to rich information is useful, but it can also become overwhelming. So we're making the map more dynamic and more tailored. I take it back. Highlighting the most relevant I information exactly <laughs> when you need it. Yeah. For some reason, it's 8 a.m. on a weekday. We'll display the coffee shops and bakeries more prominently in the map. While at 5 p.m., we'll highlight the dinner restaurants. Oh, that's that interesting. Wow. You can see which places you've been to and get what more if I like to eat it too? Huh? With just a single tap. 
Actually, I eat at four thirty. That's the uh, early bird we'll special at Denny's. It's great for seniors. I just <laughs> oh, I'd throw that in. Right on the map. You'll start seeing this more tailored map in the coming weeks. You can get your gas station sushi and anytime. Dead, yeah. People have it was made forty-eight really hours ago. No breakfast for dinner for pandemic, you. To see how busy a place is before heading out. Now we're expanding this capability from specific places like restaurants and shops to neighborhoods with a feature called area busyness. Say you're in Rome and want to head over to the Spanish Steps and its nearby shops. It's another kind of traffic report. With area busyness, you'll be able to understand at a glance if it's the right time for you to go based on how busy that part of the city Spanish is Spanish Steps are always busy. <laughs> and as you Sorry. heard before, we <laughs> use our industry-leading differential privacy techniques to protect anonymity in this feature. Area busyness like will roll swarm. out globally in the coming months. So that was a lot. To recap, we are expanding our live view capabilities, making maps more detailed and tailored and showing you how busy certain areas are to help you make sense of the world all around you. All of this is possible because of our deep, deep commitment for over 16 years to build the world's most helpful map for people everywhere. That means mapping roads across more than 60 million kilometers, listing more than a billion buildings, creating a community of over 150 million local guides, and finally, applying the most advanced AI technology. All so you can have the most accurate, comprehensive, and detailed map wherever you live in the world. It's on hard any for Google device, to impress us. And freaking Google. IOS. Right. Hmm. Access to rich information is crucial. Whether Ron Amadio you're says we are now entering hour number two. Yeah. Two, Please keep and your hands and feet year, inside the car at all times. I haven't heard anything about Android, so obviously shop. that's going to be coming up here pretty soon. To tell you more about how we're making it easier to shop online. From inspiration to action, here's, here's Marguerite Vesteiger. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Bill Reddy looks You've like Jack heard Black. How Bill Reddy's ready. And information and make it more helpful for you. We're doing this in a big way for shopping. More than a billion times a day, people are shopping across Google, and we're constantly working to make that experience better. This guy's president Whether of you're Commerce browsing for payments. inspiration or ready to buy. Oh, he was president of Commerce and Payments now, at PayPal. Let's He's talk now about at all Google. The ways he he left. And he was PayPal's COO and has just joined Google as graph, president of Commerce. Which revolutionized structured yeah, that's information new. That about happened. people, oh, a couple places, years ago. Yeah, and things. We're now introducing December, the so shopping year graph, and a half ago. our most comprehensive data set for billions of products and the merchants that sell them. Building on oh, the this is the guy graph, who uh, the founded pay Braintree. Together this is the Braintree guy. From websites, oh. prices, yeah. reviews, videos, and most importantly, the product data we receive from brands and retailers directly. I'm actually interviewed Because this the guy. shopping graph knows about so known. many products, we can connect users with over 24 billion listings to buy those items from millions of merchants across the web, helping you find more of what you're looking for from a broader range of sellers and giving you just as much or more choice in the digital world as you have in the physical world. The best part is that the shopping graph spans across Google, making it easier to go from inspiration to purchase no matter where you are. Let's see how this comes to life across shopping moments, from lens to search, photos, no, I don't, I'm YouTube, not sure who this is for. Um, as we all know, shopping yeah. inspiration is this a pitch to use Google Shopping like in the world around us? Is this a us? pitch to merchants? And for these moments, is, Google I'm Lens not sure who this is for. Is awesome. It turns the world into your own personal I mean, show. A lot of what we've seen, I could say that for same example, thing. Yeah, about. it feels more like uh, they put out a memo said, who wants to speak function. at I.O.? So I open and they had a little battle to right see which divisions got to show off their stuff. All right, Rochambeau. And similar items, too. I showed the patio set to my daughter, but she didn't love it. So it was back to the drawing board. We did a bit more browsing together, starting with the Google Images tab on search, where we see hundreds of millions of shopping searches each month. I second that sign. Thanks to the shopping graph. Did I ask to do this? I showed the patio the set to my to daughter, like, but she didn't love it. See that it was in stock. So let's look at some more patio video. sets. It's <laughs> too much like my life. I'm constantly taking screenshots <laughs> of products I like, but they usually end up buried in my photos. Here's one I've saved for a pair of sneakers I saw. But now, to solve for this, when you view any screenshots in Google Photos, there'll be a suggestion to search the photo with lens. 
You'll see organic How many years results. have they been they telling us find this? that pair of shoes or browse Oh, I've been time. hearing this since cable TV was invented. Then, You're going to be able to point at an research, outfit on the screen and say, get me that. But, but for sure, year, at the last Google I.O., if not before then, they easier to shop products yeah. said Lens would do this. Yeah, creators. you're right. They have had um, parts of this. Maybe what they're talking about more is the deeper integration to search everything inside and, and, and have it be more of like, a, I don't know, something that appears automatically for you instead of having to search it out. Because I think what happens a lot of times with features like this is that, yes, it's built into the software. But you never use it. But you never you yeah. never know to go to it. You yeah. never use it. And Google's thinking, well, if we put it in front of you more, maybe you'll actually use it. But maybe people just don't use this sort of thing. Maybe that's the point. And a few things in my Lowe's cart. You're such a nice guy, Jason. <laughs> You're giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm good at that. <laughs> I'm very practiced and well-versed in giving people the benefit of the doubt. Your personal information and what's in your carts are never shared with anyone externally without your permission. Now, once you're done researching and are ready to buy, we also but you gave you permission when you value. bought the phone, so it's okay. Mm. <laughs> we'll use your favorite loyalty True. programs from merchants <laughs> like Sephora and Target to show you the best purchase options. In this example, since you're a Sephora Beauty Insider, you already qualify for a promotion. And if you're not ready to buy, you can opt in for price drop notifications. Taking a step back, these experiences are only possible because of our vibrant community of retailers on Google. We're proud to take an open ecosystem approach that helps any merchant, both big and small, get discovered. And that gives you more shopping choices. This has been more important than ever in what's been a tough time for businesses. That's why this past year, we accelerated our plans and made it free for merchants to sell their products across Google. Since then, we've seen an 80% increase in merchants on Google, with the vast majority being small and medium-sized businesses. And today, we're making it easier than ever for merchants of all sizes to get on Google. Together with Shopify, we're excited to launch a seamless integration so that the more than 1.7 million merchants this on is Shopify also can reach more consumers a in a matter of minutes. Response. With just yeah. a few clicks, these retailers We're not doing Google search. We're helping all these merchants. One billion right. shopping journeys each day. Shopify is a competitor. Search no, they're a friend. Maps, right. Images to Lens and YouTube. We believe you deserve the most choice available and will continue to innovate on shopping along every step of the way. So far, you've heard many of the ways we're using AI to make information more useful for you. AI can also help us revisit our favorite memories and moments, especially this past year when many of us have been feeling nostalgic. To talk about new innovations in Google Photos, here's Shimreet. Finally, you can remove that chain link fence. <laughs> they show that every you know, single time. Great to be back I'm on campus waiting. talking with you all about Google Photos. We capture photos and videos so we can look back and remember. They help us feel connected. She's the connected. head of Google Photos, by the way. And obviously. today, there are more than four trillion photos and videos stored Which in I still Google love. Photos. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Um, I wonder so if they'll address photos, this. Problem that two weeks will no longer have unlimited selfies, storage for free. All stored together makes it hard to rediscover the important. We, we already know they're not a, a, a in fact, addressing any the of the difficult subjects. In fact, the vast majority of photos, no. Google photos are never viewed. And we've heard from you how powerful it is to rediscover a memory that helps you tell your story and reconnect. Apple does this so quite today, well too. I want to actually, show you to new say. features that use AI to resurface meaningful moments and bring your memories to life, all while giving you more control so you can choose what you want to relive. Soon, we're launching a new way to look back that we're calling Little Patterns. Little Patterns show the magic in everyday moments by identifying not so obvious moments and resurfacing them to you. What was that pause for? I'll show you how that this works. That was a not so obvious moment. This feature uses machine okay. learning to translate photos <laughs> into I, I think she thought something would pop up there. And then right? compares how visually or conceptually similar these images are. When we find a set of three or more photos with similarities such as shape or color, we'll surface them Look, as a here's pattern. all your yellow photos. When we started testing little patterns, we saw some great stories come to life. Like how one of our engineers traveled the world with their favorite orange backpack. orange backpack. 
or how Here's our product manager, Christy, red wine again and had again a habit and again of again. capturing <laughs> objects of yeah, similar this, shape this, and color. This is going to have some problems. Or for me, <laughs> I received a pattern of my family you are hanging picking out your nose. Yeah. over the years. <laughs> you really like to do that. There so many fun <laughs> memories there, but I didn't realize how many pics I'd snapped until I saw this. When will this be available? These photos on their own wouldn't necessarily be meaningful, but when they're pieced together, they tell a story that's uniquely yours. As always, these memories are privately presented to you and are only visible to your Google Photos account. In addition to using machine learning to better curate your memories, we also want to bring these moments to life with cutting edge effects. Last year, we launched cinematic photos to help you relive your memories in a more vivid way. I want to show you how we're building on this feature with computational photography to make still photos even more immersive. When we take a photo, most of us actually take two to three photos of the same shot. That's right. Truth. Just to make sure we get the right one. Yep. Any parent who tries to get all their kids smiling and looking at the camera at the same time she will has know three. what I mean. Cinematic moments will take these near duplicate images and use neural networks to synthesize the movement between image A what? and image B. We interpolate the photos and fill in the gaps by creating new frames. What? The end result is a vivid, moving picture. What? Huh? And the cool thing about this effect is it can oh, work yeah. on any pair of images. Fake! Deep fake! Deep fake! Deep fake photo photos! Creating this effect from scratch would take professional cool, animators freaky. hours. You'll never but trust your selfie English, again. No. You can automatically bring this experience right to your gallery. And we know that looking oh, back is never so a one-size-fits-all solution. It's more meaningful when you can look back on content that's personalized to you. So later this year, you'll see new types of memories that are relevant to the moments you celebrate. I Whether was thinking it was going to be more like you've got three photos, and in two different photos, you've got the right smile right. for two different people. So you create another photo Samsung's that has the right smile. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Right it's really auto-morphing. Right. In addition to providing personalized content to look back on, we also want to give you more control. We heard from you that controls can be helpful for anyone who has been through a tough life event, breakup, or loss. Specifically, we heard from the transgender community that resurfacing certain photos can be painful. So we are working directly with our partners at GLAAD and listening to feedback to understand how we can make reminiscing more inclusive. These insights inspired us to give you the control to hide photos of certain people or time periods from our memories feature. <laughs> and I would soon, prefer not to remember to last year. Remove a photo from a memory, <laughs> yeah. rename the memory, or remove it entirely. Remove this from my memory. We're wow. All these controls That's really easy interesting. To find, so you can make changes in just a few taps. <laughs> and I so. This summer, I mean, that comes you'll in be able very to handy uncover if, uh, little patterns, if, uh, absolutely. rediscover you know, meaningful memories, get rid of that X. With someone, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's one good example. And you can do it all on your own terms with new controls. And also 2020. Looking back yes. is an important part yeah. of the human experience, <laughs> which is why Google Photos is making it easier than ever to relive your memories. Thank you. Not sure I had deep fakes coming to photos in my bingo card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shambit. I'm really excited by the progress we are making with AI. As you've heard today, we're using AI to advance our understanding of information and build more helpful experiences across Google Search, Maps, Shopping Kevin and Marx photos. called that the eternal sunshine feature. <laughs> Next, you're going to hear about innovations in our computing The moment platforms. where you realize you can't even trust it's your own photos you anymore. Yeah, those were removed. Android Sorry. You can't trust your own memories. The newest release of our open platform, starting with a fundamental change to how you experience it. I'll hand it off to Matthias to give you a look. Ah, this entire now this is the Android Matthias. bit, right? Yeah, well, this so Matthias uh, does design for Android. He was he was the main guy behind Material Design. Right, and, we and know Material, Material Design, design was, was the last big update. Of that Google's was the last look. major update. They've been yeah. iterating on that for quite a while yeah. now, and we know that Android 12 is going to have a There's big design refresh. IO flower bed. So I would guess so. Matthias will be in charge. Yeah. Yeah. And he's very known for wearing 
Interesting Look shirts. at that. From the beginning, That's beautiful. design yeah. has made computers more helpful by making them easier to use, more personal. Google Vice President of Design. In 2014, we introduced material design to address the explosion of mobile phones. Then you all got it set a new standard for Android apps. And for it Google, was flat. It rationalized our products simply. <laughs> but it did actually change the design language across it the did. board, not but just oh, for yeah. Google. Everybody the started doing it. Yep. Now we're at a moment where computers are like showing it. up in places that we I'm never imagined. It was really a retreat a from skeuomorphism. People are yearning mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. to Which their much individuality needed. and demanding control from their technology. We believe this is a challenge for the whole industry to acknowledge that emotion is essential and that beauty is personal. To face this challenge, we had to question everything. Instead of form following function, what if form followed feeling? Instead of Google Blue, we imagined Material You, a new design that includes you as a co-creator letting you transform the look and feel of all your apps by generating personal material palettes that mix color science with a designer's Ooh. eye and engineering UI elements to respond in with real time. Effort. We can delight every style. Your audio's breaking up, Jeff. A new design that can flex unplug, every replug. screen and fit every device. Your apps adapt comfortably every place you go. Because theming has been around new design as long as, practically as long as GUIs have been around. Accessibility, yeah, yeah it, we know with Android 12, there's dynamic theming tied to the wallpaper as one example. So it's interesting though, this is more than colors. This is changing need. controls. Yeah, and, right. No longer defaulting Interface to elements. one size fits all. Material U is a radical new way to think about Do you see sitting down design. and doing all this? We invested years into advanced I mean, I UI engineering. That is the challenge with something like this. Is app, great. You can tweak it all, but do you have the time? Do you have the interest to do that? I wonder if they make too. it more of an automatic and experience. You know? Unique and beautiful. That's a good point, Leo. It does work outside of Google. He just said it does. But, oh, but the app terrifying. developer will have to use yeah, Google. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. That leap of faith is API revolutionizing design, yeah. design across Google. For the first time, we can consider the details of devices and accessibility. This is great. You can do on their screens. Colorblind designs. We unify like that. everything that Google makes through common proportions, textures, and shapes. Oh, but that would be interesting. We give you tasteful though. choices. You had a Nest thermostat. You had a Chromecast. You have an Android device, and they wardrobe. all kind of sync together More to give you the same choice. visual. We uniquely tailor. I see you're wearing right, flower prints today. Would you like everything to reflect? <laughs> Beyond you must really like flowers. Dark, Here. A mode for every mood. A mode Jason, for every mood. really interesting brand thing. Yeah. Where the brand is not Google's choice, device. but is the fact that you Material had control you over all that. That's right. interesting. To Google Pixel this fall, including this fall. all of your favorite fall. Google apps. And over the following year, we will continue our vision, bringing it to the web, Chrome OS, wearables, smart displays, and okay. all of Google's products. So that really... Material U is yeah. a way to design differently. Watch. We look can't that, wait watch. to see what yeah. brings you joy and what you find beautiful. Next are the details of Android 12. Beyond the redesigned widgets and your material palette, Samir will show you our most personal OS ever. Sweet. OK, here we go. I'm Jason time. I'm excited. I'm excited that the, that it shows that they've been working on kind of pulling the rug out from this standard. You know, I, what yep. was the last version that they did the, the the major update? Was that Android six or like six later? And it's very similar to what it was then. And so it's time. They're you know what I want? I want it to be like blog templates where I could I could take Jason's template. Jason could oh, yeah. sell me a template that I like. You'll want to take mine. Mine's going to be pretty awesome. I'm Jeff. sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. The flowers. I will love the flowers. I know it. So we're seeing a little uh, montage of uh, Android 12 look and feel. Yeah, I like design it. Design elements. I, I do like it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's good. Yeah. Samir Samad is vice president of product management, has been for five years at Google. Friend of the network. Hi, everyone. We've interviewed him. It's great to be back live at Google I.O. What you just saw was a peek into the biggest design change to Android in years. And we're going to go through all of it. But first, 
I wanted to share some exciting How much time do you have? Yeah. Just this week, we crossed an amazing milestone. There are now I think we're not going to see a Pixel 6 billion wow. active Android devices around the world. Take that, Apple. This would never have been well, he, possible without the We did the hear the hint to the Pixel ecosystem. coming in the fall, which it's not but like that's right. new information. So that's usually when the do. Pixels hit. But. And Android 12 is one of our most ambitious releases ever. There are three big themes that we're focused on. First, smartphones are deeply personal. And we what think your phone should adapt to you, not candy. the other way around. The DQ, Second, right? So it's to keep your S? personal information safe. The OS yeah. should be secure by default and private by design. And third, we Dickers? want all of your devices, TVs, cars, watches, and more. S to gives work you lots of choices. Q was the tough with one. With your phone yeah, Sunday. at the center. Yeah. I'm excited to show you more. So let's start by taking a look at our new UI for Android. We've overhauled everything from the lock screen to system settings. Revamping the so way I think the color is picking shapes, up the wallpaper, light, right? In this, inspired by Material yeah, U. That, that's my understanding. Let me show you what we've done with color. We've got something new planned for Google Pixel using what we call color extraction. Think of it as one part art and one part science. Watch what happens when the wallpaper changes. Like if I use this picture of my kids actually getting along for once. I set it as my background. Everything becomes that color. That's really interesting. Voila. The but of course, it's, designer, it's, it's a designer palette, so it's all complimentary. Okay, that, that's an easier way to personalize. I like yes. this. Make it this. And I, by the way, it's not the first time we use a clustering that, algorithm with material yeah. color targets to determine which colors are dominant, which ones are complementary, and which ones just look great together. It then applies hues across different parts of the interface. A lot of, of people interface. have rotating uh, In other wallpaper, words, so it'd be nice to have It's going to be beautiful. To have every day you wake up. The, the result is a one-of-a-kind um, design, just for you. Look at that. And you'll That's see beautiful, it actually. On Google yeah, Pixel in it the is. fall. In the fall. But this new UI is oh, well. more than a visual redesign. I had my credit Many card out. I really did. Many interactions have been simplified, and system spaces purposefully reimagined. Starting from the lock screen, the design is more playful with dynamic lighting. Pick up your phone. And it lights up. No, 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 Not dark Press mode. Press the power button to wake up oh, the yeah. phone instead. And the light no. ripples out from your touch. It ripples out, Jeff, Even the from clock your touch. is in tune with you. Even the uh, clock. you don't have any notifications, it appears uh, larger on the lock screen. Oh. So you know you're all caught up. Oh. Nice. The notification nice shade is more intuitive with a crisp, at-a-glance view of your app notifications, whatever you're currently listening to or watching, and quick settings that give you control over the OS with just yeah, a swipe a big, and a tap. A change. Yeah. The quick setting space doesn't just look and feel different. It's been redesigned it's big to buttons. include Google Pay yep. <laughs> and home controls while still allowing for customization. So you can have everything you need right at your fingertips. And now you can invoke the Google Assistant by long pressing the power button, making it easier than ever to harness the power of Google our engineers have done some pretty amazing work on performance in Samsung Android 12 did with their power to make button. all right. the motion and animation well. in the UI yeah. Yeah. super smooth. You could, you could change that as a default lock contention. if you uh, wanted. Uh, maybe they ever banned the squeeze? Such as activity, yeah. window, and package manager. Pretty certain they And have. the team also reduced the CPU time of Android's system server by a whopping 22%. Basically, well, but maybe not. I mean, this isn't about Pixel. Passed. This is about the Android OS. Right. So there's a lot yeah, to explore in this new design, and I can't wait for you all to try it out. Now, the design isn't the only part of the device. Well, probably that's probably today Chrome OS. Our phones I hold so much important information, yeah, and it's they, critical they always do that, to keep right? yeah. it private mm -hmm. and secure. Usually, to tell do. you more about that, let me hand it off to Suzanne. And that would certainly get developers who are excited about this stuff, like, right. on it immediately. Right. They'd, they'd capitalize on that about as good as they could if they did that today. So. Hi, everyone. VP Product, Android, device, and Play Security. Three billion today. We design security and privacy for everyone, no matter how expensive their device is. We built game-changing capabilities for everyone, from file-based encryption to TLS by default and secure DNS to prevent traffic tampering and data She's breaches. She's an underwater photographer and, and citizen scientist with the Google Reef Pixel Check Foundation. And Samsung Galaxy 
have continually received the highest Founding member security of Google, rating Google's Global Women the at Leadership Annual Mobile Organization. OS Comparison Report. It's also on the board of Simply put, Wellesley the and, most uh, secure devices run MIT. on Android. And with Android 12, we're going even further to keep your information safe. Let's start with a common experience. Granting an app access to sensitive information. Turn-by-turn -turn directions based on your precise location are really helpful. But we recognize that this access can also raise privacy questions. To give people more transparency and control, we've created a new privacy dashboard that shows you what type of data was Google accessed for 14 and years. when. So, this dashboard well, as long as anybody. all the apps on your phone, including all of your Google apps. And we've made it really easy to revoke an app's permission directly from the dashboard. We've also added an indicator to make it clear when an app is using your camera or microphone. Uh, this yeah. is good. That's Apple good. does but this let's now. Take that a yeah. step it's further. really a good feature. If you don't yeah. want any apps to access the microphone or camera, even if you've granted them permission in the past, we've added two new toggles in quick settings. Fantastic. So you can completely That's disable very those smart. sensors for every app. Very smart. Yep. So those are a few examples of privacy you can immediately see. We're excited to share more on under the hood privacy, privacy that's baked into the heart of Android. As machine vision, speech recognition, and AI become increasingly beneficial, there are even more opportunities for the OS to be helpful. And to make it easier for everyone to embrace these new innovations, we're combining cutting edge features with powerful privacy. You heard Jen talk about the ways we're building private by design technology. Thanks to advances here with Android's private compute core, we're able to introduce new features using our unique AI capabilities while still keeping your personal information compute safe, core. private, and local to your phone. Local, local, local. Android's yeah. private compute core enables things like now playing, which tells you what Fuck. song is playing in the background. And smart reply. That's always been on device, by the way. Yeah, right. It's been around for years, considering yeah. the amount of coverage. Come like, well, it's only about 100,000 songs, but it turns out. Way, it identifies like 90, all of the 90 yeah. percent of the songs turns I've ever listened to. We don't listen to a lot of weird songs. Yeah, it's yeah. totally. Probably doesn't know device. Yellow Gold yet. <laughs> it's isolated from the network <laughs> to preserve Someday, your privacy. That's, how, that's how I know I've made it. That's your goal. And like the rest of Android, private compute core is open source. It's fully inspectable wow. and verifiable That's by the very security good. community. Yeah. Android is the first commercial mobile operating system to enable technically enforced privacy like this. And this is just one of the ways we'll continue to pioneer innovation while also maintaining the highest standards of privacy, security, and safety. There's no reason for Google not to be more pushing privacy on privacy. And Android 12 Again, <laughs> because they know everything they need to know to, to make money. Now, There's no reason for them to Samir push that any harder. Talk about right? how we're building for a multi-device world. Just by search alone, data. every time you search, they've got first-person right. data on you. If you provide services of use, you get first-person data. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, you Suzanne, make content, you don't. That's a really good point, Jeff. That's exactly right. And the that's why they provide all these services. We use on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. Newspapers, Laptops, TVs, cars, and more. This Chrome. next chapter of Android is focused on delightful and helpful experiences across all the devices that are connected to your phone so that everything just works better together. Just like Microsoft. Let's start by looking at how your phone This works is the with old Android tag better together. Chrome. With a single tag, that? you can unlock uh, the line into your yeah, phone. Yeah, no, but it's the old phone is they, they, This is their motto from Incoming chat yeah, notifications from three years ago. Apps yeah. on your phone are right there I, in We Chrome. haven't heard it yet today. And soon, if you want to share a picture one click. Now it refers and you to can Chromebook. Access your phone's <laughs> and, most and recent iPhone photos. and or, uh, Pixel phone. As or another simple example, together is all of the devices, yes, not necessarily exactly. the people. Not you and the yes, phone. Right. It's the devices <laughs> together. Like, yeah. 50% of the so time. this is something uh, Microsoft's it's doing with Samsung and other Android We're devices with your phone, but it's it doesn't work very well. You also, TV remote features in the phone. phone. And Apple, of course, has continuity, which does work very well because... It's an Apple ecosystem. For the ecosystem. more than 80 million devices using Android TV OS, this will work yeah. right out of the box. Google's trying to up its game as far and as that's we concerned, want it seems all like. all of your smart devices to work together, not just those in your home, even your car. In fact, Android Auto is available in more than 100 million cars. 
and the vast majority of new vehicles from loved brands like Ford, GM, Honda, and more. Pretty much everybody will but Tesla. Android Auto Wireless. <laughs> no more cords. I remember dying for it to come. We're to also cars. really yeah. excited. Well, Android to Auto Wireless is great. For digital. Because they just get in the car and it works. Car key yeah. will allow you to lock. Oh, unlock, and this is something and Apple's been offering as well. From your phone. They it call it car key too. NFC and ultra wide Only BMW so far it offering super it with secure Apple. And see, easy yeah. to use. Just walk up to your car, step in, and away you go. You got to get the car guys to do this. And if your friend needs mm -hmm. to borrow your car, you can remotely and securely Same share your Apple's digital key, key with them. Car key is launching this fall with select Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy smartphones. And we're working with BMW and others across the industry <laughs> so to bring it to BMW. their upcoming cars. BMW again. <laughs> And others. Okay. Yeah. That was a quick look at Android. Ford well. offers its own fall, phone as key, as features, a key pack. And, and it's not as good, frankly, as, as what Google or Apple would mm -hmm. be doing. Try it out on phones. So from there you go. Beta one available today. Ah, beta Google one available Pixel, today. Oh, but that's not the public beta. And Xiaomi. All right. From a personalized so that's, UI with, that's with the Google uh, TVOS device. Privacy and security. And better experiences. Is that what he's saying? I, I thought that meant that Android life. 12 was the There's beta. So but, um, no, no. In beta one of Android 12, you will have the capability now, to do the better no together. Beyond the phone. Pair, now, pairing with your TVOS. Google is announcing the latest beta for Android computing. 12 today. Beta one. The smartwatch. Yeah. Oh, today? Watch. Yeah, we knew we were going to get an update on the wearables the today. The biggest update to Wear OS. Ever. It's Good. not dead yet. We've been hard at work in three key areas. Biggest update means they First, they are actually caring. An update, any platform. update. Yes. <laughs> Jointly with Samsung. Oh, interesting. Focus on battery life, performance, and making oh, it easier for developers. Samsung, of course, was developing Tizen, the so they wouldn't be tied Second, to Google Wear. And many of their watches do not, in fact, use Android including Wear. Including updates to your favorite Google apps. And third, a world-class health and fitness service. Created by the newest addition to the Google Besides family. Besides Google Fit? Fitbit. Oh, uh, of course. So let's get started by talking about Fitbit. our partnership with Samsung. Samsung and Google have a long history of collaborating. From the early Does Samsung Android, still make any Android Wear watches? I don't, they don't, but the recent the rumor has, has been that their next gear and now will be. Will be. And and so this, this ties right into that, it seems like. And ties in this ties in to a unified that. platform yeah, yeah. focused on faster unified performance, platform. longer battery life, and a thriving developer community. What is it? Working mean? together, we've made apps start up to 30% faster, and animations and transitions are super smooth. We're also addressing what consumers always want from a wearable longer battery life. By taking advantage of smaller, the time. lower power the time would cores, be nice. yeah. we can do things like run the heart rate sensor <laughs> continuously, letting you Continuous better track your activity rate. during wow. the day and your sleep overnight, while giving you plenty of battery to spare for the next day. This combined platform isn't just for Google and Samsung. It will continue to be available for all device makers, which means Developers can build apps with a single set of APIs and reach millions of consumers all over the world oh, through the Google Play Store. So Tizen to is now going to be played it's my compatible. To welcome Patrick oh. This is very interesting. I'm not sure how they're doing Samsung this. Mobile to Google I.O. Uh, this is a kind of a capitulation from Samsung. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Samir. For the past 12 years, Samsung and Google have worked together and made Samsung Galaxy and Android successful. Yeah, although they never mention Android at any Samsung Galaxy events, but okay. For Samsung Galaxy users. Most recently, we pioneered foldable devices and delivered rich communication experiences with Google Duo and Messages. And we are very excited about the new chapter of our partnership, wearables. The Galaxy Watch is already loved by Android Actually, I users. love the Galaxy Watch. Mm -hmm. A lot design. better than any of the they are. Watch yeah, yeah, they're some of the best uh, An Android based wearables. So, so, well, not Android based, we but the best Android compatible. Android Galaxy friendly yeah. <laughs> the wearables out there. Single platform, unifying the ecosystem for customers and developers. Boy, I'd we love to know more about that. Optimize the performance, meaning better responsiveness and longer battery life. Is it Androizen or is it You will also be able to enjoy Google apps and services <laughs> like the Play Store. Google Maps and more <laughs> on the next Samsung Galaxy Watch. I am truly excited to welcome the developer community to our new 
vibrant and open ecosystem. What Thank gonna, you. What are they going to call this? Back over to you, Samir. This is bizarre. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. We're very excited about our partnership. And I know many developers will be Hands thrilled up. about our unified platform. On top of this new foundation, Wear is also getting a big update to the consumer experience. To tell you more, what let Samsung me hand it off out of to Bjorn. I think that they're just acknowledging that they Tizen didn't have the apps. Right. And okay. didn't have the ecosystem. Well, so the they're basically the giving it up. The whole idea of it was to replace mm -hmm. Android Wear. Thanks, Samir. And I don't blame hey, everyone. them. everyone. Given... Over the last seven years, we've learned a lot about what people love most about their smartwatch. used to have a, a whole new office on the roof. He's the... Preferences in mind. <laughs> VP in charge First, of Wear OS. Our new navigation system makes it faster than ever to get things done on Brought your watch. him down off the roof. <laughs> and uh, now, he's, uh, now he's got something to do. Functions like instantly switching to another app. Let's say I'm running with Strava and I'm about to hit that long, grueling hill. I just double press to switch to my last app, Spotify, put on my most yeah, motivating see, this is all song, stuff that and Samsung right back would have to develop AMP. themselves if it's they had stayed with, with Tizen. It's such a simple thing for a more helpful and fluid experience. And I think that's really the, what they're saying. People is, have yeah, also we told us they love getting glanceable pieces of helpful information just to swipe away from their watch face. So we're expanding our collection of tiles. Thanks to the new tiles API, any developer can create one, giving people many more ways to customize their home screen carousel. Now I can go from checking my next meeting to the weather forecast to this new tile from Calm, which helps me relax before a stressful event like presenting at Google I.O. <laughs> We've also been hard at work revamping the wearables app experience with a material design update and expanded capabilities. This is starting uh, with your favorite ones from probably Google. because they acquired Fitbit. This and includes things like they really want to compete against Apple Watch, which is totally dominant in this segment now. Being able to use Google Pay in 37 catch countries up and more than 200 major catch up. They've got a the big world. road ahead of them as far as and, that's and, concerned. And, and during pandemic, behind. touch to pay took off because yeah. of Apple Watch, yeah. right? Yeah. And Google Pay kind of left in the dust. Nearby. Yep. We're thrilled about all the ways you'll be able to experience the best of Google on your watch. And speaking of the best of Google, I'm delighted to welcome the newest member of the family to wear. Fitbit. So the first Health Fitbit. Health and fitness with is essential for wearables, and Fitbit has built a oh, big app service. Really vital acquisition so now, to keep Wear alive, I'd and that may be that Wear was just dormant until this thing happened. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. this this pairing right. happened. He keeps saying Wear, or they keep Thanks saying Wear. We yeah. heard that there were rumors that it was going to be rebranded from Wear OS to Wear. Maybe part of that is to include Fitbit as a, like a, an attachment of that division, even though it's not running true Wear OS. This guy uh, was the founder of Fitbit. Supporting them in their health journey by providing a range of devices from trackers to smartwatches, along with software and services that give users amazing health and wellness content and rich insights and analytics on their data. And now that we're part of Google, we're working to bring the best of Fitbit to Wear. We will be making some of Fitbit's most popular features available really on Wear watches. quite a success story. This was just a, yeah, tracking your health a Kickstarter when it started. Hey, uh, no kidding. 2007, no he's been CEO ever In the future, uh, we'll the be building premium founder. smartwatches based on Wear that combine the best of Fitbit's health expertise with Google's ambient computing capabilities. Yeah, it's Wear. It's All this is now. just the beginning yeah. of how, together with Google, we can do even more to inspire and motivate people on their journey to better health. Back to you, Samir. And thanks for the check. The Android 12 slide, that is the Android 12 beta uh, available on multiple phones. But is it public? As public as their public betas are, yeah, absolutely. And so it is available. All right, it, it should be. Let I don't me know go to developer.google.com. Yeah, I don't know that we have the details on getting access to it yet. Maybe that's something that, that they uh, post at the end of this. From this a unified keynote, platform with way. Samsung, to a new consumer experience and a world-class fitness exactly. service from Fitbit. This is a new era for the wearables ecosystem. So that was a lot. But before we move on from yeah, Android and still, Wear, there's still something says really developer preview on the developer that page. I, to share right. I bet that I bet that updates at the, the yeah, world's yeah. largest OS. We have a responsibility to build for everyone. 
Developer preview was up As to three, so you're right. It would be beta one would be the first public beta. Yeah. We're working to make technology more accessible and equitable. One of the most important parts of any smartphone is the camera. Pictures are deeply personal and play an important role in shaping how people see you and how you see yourself. But for people of color, photography has not always seen us as we want to be seen. True that. Even yeah. in some of our own Google products. To make smartphone photography truly and for this was, everyone, remember Mark Lavoie talked about this two years ago at Google I.O. and he's now an a, a Adobe. He left. An inclusive mm. camera. That was the best Let's part of Google I.O. two years ago was Mark Lavoie's yes. talk. Yeah, they did exactly. In People this. tend to think that cameras are objective, but a bunch of decisions go into making these tools. And historically, it's worth repeating, those frankly. decisions have not been taking people of color into account. It's still reaffirming this idea that black people aren't worthy of being seen. So far, we've partnered with a range of different expert image makers who've taken thousands of images to diversify our image data sets, helped improve the accuracy of our auto white balance and auto exposure algorithms, and given aesthetic feedback to make our images of people of color more beautiful and more accurate. The process was create almost like a guidebook to capture skin tones. I can't help but think of my mom. She yeah, still thinks that, that she's not beautiful yeah. because the pictures were taken of her when she's younger. Yeah. How many little girls are thinking they're not that beautiful wasn't, because was they were not for the darkest skin person dark in skin. the photo and they didn't get represented? The work is for us to do. It's not for people to change the way they look. It's for us to change the way the tools work. Yeah, it's really... Hard to underestimate the impact of that, you know, after oh, that's years. So important, you know. and journalistically too. Is yes, is critically important. A tremendous amount working with these experts, and we're making changes to our computational photography algorithms to address long-standing problems. And as Kevin Marks is pointing out in the chat room, and we fired the people of color who pointed this out. To but, algorithmically uh, <laughs> reduce stray light, to bring out natural brown tones, and prevent overbrightening and desaturation of darker skin tones. We're also able to reflect curly and wavy hair types more accurately in selfies with new algorithms that better separate a person from the background in any image. Although there's still much to do, we're working hard to bring all of what you've seen here and more Aunt to Pruitt Google in the Pixel chat room says, this fall. It's nice, but that whole and AI team to back was still a mess. We learned yeah. with the entire and Android ecosystem. Yeah, so that together, not talk about it. we can make cameras that work fairly for everyone. Thank you. Really miss Mark Lavoie. 20 Lavoie. minutes, what's left? Yeah, he was there. Well, we're not going to see any hardware, that's clear. No, no, I know that. I, I just yeah. have a little love for the Chrome OS. <laughs> he, he ever lives in hope. Somebody's so all the it. interstitials here have been showing the word I.O. in various yeah. forms, whether it's umbrellas or flowers or now painting in the parking lot. That's great. Karen DeSalvo joins the stage. As Sundar shared, we want to build a more helpful a Google for everyone to increase Chief knowledge, Chief success, health officer at happiness, Google. and health beyond anything previously possible. Today, I want to bring you inside to see how our recent advances in image recognition are helping to solve some of the world's big health challenges. Let's start with breast cancer, a diagnosis that one in eight women will face in their lifetime. Mammograms can help catch breast cancer earlier, but half of all women experience a false alarm across a decade of screening. So we've been working to make mammography better. Last year, our research demonstrated AI's potential to analyze screening mammograms with accuracy similar to clinicians. And now we're collaborating with Northwestern Medicine on an investigative device research study to better understand how AI can apply to the breast cancer screening process. Let's hear why this matters. So Google on the uh, Android beta program page is still showing Android 11 right. beta is complete, but watch this space. Oh, we will, Google. <laughs> when we found out I'm watching had it breast right cancer, now. It was in the late 90s, and it wasn't something that anyone Fine print. About. This is an investigational device study. The AI tool is limited by federal law to investigative use. has not been evaluated by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for safety or efficacy. Every thought runs through your head. What if they find something? This has been, of course, Apple's issue, too, with, with a lot of the health features of the iPhone is... 
they could do studies, right? About but they, having it's, you know, as soon as it becomes a medical device, you've got to get FDA approval. It may approval. take radiologists days, sometimes weeks, to get through the list of mammograms that need to be read. This is a national problem. We don't have enough people doing what we need to do. With the research study that we're doing with Google, we're using artificial intelligence that scans the mammogram image. It helps flag patients that may need additional imaging. I get an email that says the patient has been flagged. And if I agree, we take the patient and they take more pictures right away. We're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we can IBM do with artificial Watson intelligence. IBM Watson was somewhat of a failure like at this kind of thing. In fact, IBM has sold the Watson the division off. But we have seen uh, other tests with AIs looking at X-rays and other radiology results. And doing, a, in, uh, in some cases, a better job than the humans. Mm -hmm. Certainly, is good. It's they sold Watson or Watson this Health. Is a great Watson Health. Example of how no, I think they, they divested all of Watson. Really? Yeah. Wow. That was a couple. That was a couple of months ago. At Google, we want. Let me, let me check. To I, have the highest quality care. It looks like it's still under Technology IBM, so maybe it's just Watson and Health. should help close the equity gap. I think they're still trying to sell Watson. To or maybe they haven't sold it. To bear on important they global have. health challenges, from diabetic retinopathy to our new work to improve tuberculosis detection using image recognition hmm. on chest X-rays. We also believe AI can assist you in your daily health. Yeah, it looks like they haven't People yet. People come to Google search Watson every health. day to yep. ask questions about their health. For example, we see billions of queries each year related to dermatologic issues. This is no surprise because derm conditions affect about two well, billion people globally. I hate to have to come up with a headline for this uh, I.O. There are not enough specialists <laughs> to meet the need. I'm working so on it right now. How can no. AI help when you're searching and asking? Pretty Android, what is pretty. This? Right. Meet our AI-powered dermatology assist tool, a class one CE-marked medical device that uses machine learning to help find answers to common derm conditions, right from your smartphone or computer. From your phone, just upload three different photos taken from various angles of the skin, hair, or nail issue that you want to learn about. Yeah, they, they wanted and answer to some basic sell questions Watson Health. That was the, the AI model part of Watson that wasn't the rest. making any money. In a matter of seconds, you will have a list of this possible Wall Street matching article dermatologic conditions. From uh, March. And then we can help yeah. you get relevant information Looking to sell it because to it's not profitable more. despite bringing in a billion dollars simple. annually in revenue. Developing an effective AI model for dermatology requires the also capability to interpret millions and effective. millions of images, inclusive of a full range of skin types and tones. When available, this tool will be accessible from your browser good at Jeopardy. and cover not such a good 288 chef. conditions, and, uh, not so including 90% of the most commonly searched derm-related questions on Google. But at least it's Google. good at Jeopardy. Yeah. We're working to make it available to consumers on Google search in the EU as early as the end of this year. We've EU, just at if ways you let us. <laughs> yeah. and if Margarita Vestager lets us. <laughs> but isn't just driven by medical hint, care. Hint. It's also about our social and emotional well-being. And that's where staying connected well, comes I'd in. Well, I'd say we probably come near the end. Out how Google Mr. Huggy in our chat room says the NHS has been using, and the UK has been using AI to spot breast cancer with Alphabet. So. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think we're Thank wrapping Dr. Dr. Jai back on stage. It's close. exciting to see the ways in which AI and image recognition are transforming healthcare. There are two additional areas of research where AI will have long-term impact. The first feels incredibly timely. We were all grateful to have video conferencing over the last year. It helped us stay in touch with family and friends and kept businesses and schools going. But there is no substitute for being together in the room with someone. Or so several years ago, we kicked off a project to use technology to explore what's possible. We call it Project Starline. It builds on the different areas of computer science. Then I Elon Musk came today, along and, and relies screwed it up for everybody. Hardware and highly specialized equipment. It's early and currently available in just a few of our offices but we thought it'd be fun to give you a look at people experiencing it for the first time. Let's take a look. 
When I walked into the room, I was a little suspicious. What is this? I couldn't quite understand what was going to happen when that screen lit up. Eddie! <laughs> <laughs> so, you look beautiful. I could feel her and see her, and it was this, like, 3D experience. Oh, that's wild. That is. They're signing. <laughs> I just saw my sister as if she was right in front of me. I it's really, a screen. really thought, like, she and I were in the same room. But they put it behind a piece of like wood, so it looks here. like it's three-dimensional. Oh <laughs> really, yeah. I think that's the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say Cynic. it. Well, <laughs> that's pretty much how they did it. Some but there's something about the fact that what they're looking possible. at is the camera. It's also Plus the screen. You know what I mean? So you get that true, true eye contact okay. custom experience. So there's that too, Leo. We yeah. capture your shape <laughs> and <laughs> appearance from multiple perspectives. Oh. And then fuse them together to create an extremely detailed, yeah. real-time 3D model. No way. The resulting data is huge, many gigabits yeah, per see, second. Leo. To send this 3D imagery movie. over, and then we display it on a 2D screen. We develop novel compression. We put a piece of wood in front of it. <laughs> a piece of wood in front of it. Reduce the data by a factor of more than 100. It yeah, wasn't a hologram. And that. we have yeah. developed a breakthrough light field display. Oh, it is a light field display. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so it is 3D. Someone sitting right. Yeah, and they can't. We can't really show that on camera. Right. Okay. As you move right, your head and body. Yes. Our system adjusts the images to match your perspective. Light field is one of the few spectacle-free, visor-free 3D technologies. It's as close as we can get to the it's feeling of sitting not across great. from I've, someone. I've seen it at CES as last year. As sophisticated as the technology is, it vanishes. So you can focus on what's most important. I'd love to sit down in With front of Project one of these Starline, and see what it's like. I've never seen anything this big. Yeah. Uh, the all of the... Of creating the best communication well, it's life-size, too. That yeah, much. that's unusual. Yeah, the ones I've seen are pretty small. So. Our own offices, and the results are promising. There's also excitement. So that's what that lead piece of wood partners. is. It's a projector. We plan uh, a light field projector. Departments in healthcare. That's the sub tag, like yeah. more than just a in piece of wood. So basically, you're going to have meetings and you can't check your email during them because they're, they're going to know what you're doing. That will improve our entire suite of communications products. We look forward this to This is very early days stuff. To yeah, to get yeah, involved. We've seen this, but this is very early days. The second area of research I want to discuss is our work in driving forward sustainability. Sustainability has been a core value for more than 20 years. We were the first major company to become carbon neutral in 2007. We were also the first to match our operations with 100% renewable energy. That was in 2017, and we've been doing it ever since. And last year, we eliminated our entire carbon legacy. Our That's next ambition good. is our biggest yet. Of course, remember, By search uses it energy every time you do it. So. on carbon-free energy 24-7. So this instead of offsets, they want to make their own. An office on clean electricity every hour of every day. That's great. Operating 24-7 on carbon-free energy is a step change from current approaches. It means setting a higher bar to never emit carbon from our operations in the first place. It's a moonshot like Lambda or quantum computing. And it presents an equally hard They're set of problems about 2030 to is the time frame. Mm -hmm. First, we have to source carbon-free energy in every place we operate. Then we have to make a people stop breathing. In some places than in others. <laughs> and farting. And Today, farting. five no of farting. our data centers are already operating at, at or near 90% carbon-free energy. In Denmark, we built five new solar farms to support our newest data center, complementing existing wind energy on the Danish grid and it's operated carbon-free 90% of the time since day one. Another challenge of 24-7 carbon-free energy is just that. It has to run every hour of every day. So last year, we rolled out the world's first carbon-intelligent computing platform. It automatically shifts the timing of many compute tasks to when clean power sources are most plentiful. And today, I'm excited to announce we are the first company to implement carbon intelligent load shifting across both time and place within our data center network. By this time next year, we'll be shifting more than a third of non-production compute to times and places with greater availability of carbon-free energy. 
Okay, so the, to reach the 24 way, 7, Android 12 beta has now appeared on All right. the Google site. And tap into I'm still refreshing the, uh, and the other site, like though, geothermal. and it still says Android 11. So. Geothermal uses the consistent heat from the Earth to generate electricity. But you will get the new it's design. It's not widely fall, used right? today, and we want Good to question. change that. I'm excited to announce that we are partnering to develop a next generation geothermal power project. This Can will you connect sign up? to the grid, serving our Nevada data centers Looking starting now. next year. We no. believe so our yeah, the way it's worked in the past, of course, you have to. Right. The they refresh this page when you click through to try it. Yeah, and takes you to the yeah. not still not there yet. page, so yeah. we'll get there. Power. In a broad so you have to, what will happen when you get to uh, google.com slash android slash beta is it'll know what phones you use. Right. It'll say, do you want to, if, 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 it's, if it's an option, do you want to let this we pixel phone update? We are building our new campus yep. to the highest sustainability standards. When completed, these buildings will feature a first of its kind, dragon scale solar skin. That's what that is. 90,000 silver solar panels. I thought it was just an ugly roof. Nearly but it's dragon megawatts. scale solar panels. Wow. They you know, will house the largest fan. geothermal pile system in North America. No wonder Helping they've been heating the so buildings long. in the winter Holy and cow. cool them in the summer. Sustainability wow. is one of the defining challenges of our time. Good for Google. And advances in computer yep. science and AI have a huge role to play in meeting it. So it's a fitting way to end our I.O. keynote. I think of I.O. not just as a celebration of technology, but of the people who use it and build it, including the millions of developers watching today. Over the past year, we've seen how technology can be used to help billions of people through the most difficult of times. It's made us more committed than ever to our goal of building a more helpful Google for everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Please enjoy the rest of Google I.O. and stay tuned for the developer keynote coming up next. I hope to see you in person next year. And we're going to... Until then, stay safe and be well. We're going to uh, turn off the stream because uh, we have other shows to do. But if you're a developer, you might want to check out uh, all of this at uh, the Google I.O. web page. You can watch the developer keynote when it starts in a little bit. Sundar Pichai leaving the stage. Keyword of this, helpful. He began his uh, keynote by saying Google wants to be helpful and ended it with the same words. Uh, but mostly what we saw was kind of an advertisement for all of the different areas of Google. No new product announcements whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, that first well, hour really felt like Google just... Um, Saying and, and rightfully deserved in many ways, but saying, "Look how smart we are! Like, like look how far we've yeah. come! Look what we can do! It feels like the future." But not a whole lot of of um, I don't know tangible product or or no. anything like that. Even for developers, it's very high level stuff. But it certainly proves that Google is a smart company. We we already knew that, but I was more excited the second half than the first half, to be honest. But. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even say they they implied there'll be an Android uh, twelve. A preview. They didn't say public preview. They haven't launched it yet. They never mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, the only product they mentioned, uh, you know, new product is uh, Android Wear. And actually, for people who are Android Wear fans or are looking for competition to the Apple All Watch, five of you. yeah, this is probably welcome news that Android Wear and Tizen are going to somehow merge into a platform that developers can develop for. Uh, I I don't know, and it wasn't clear, but it sounds like perhaps. Samsung's Tizen operating system will just add Android app compatibility and then leave it at that. That's certainly something that's been lacking on the Tizen platform. A absolutely, yeah. Having having a Samsung watch and having access to the Google uh, Play, Play Store. ecosystem yeah. and everything, That'd that's great. great. I mean, yeah, if, if anyone had said, hey, Google and Samsung and Fitbit all together combined to try and face this Apple you know, watch threat, I probably wouldn't have believed it. But I mean, that, that right there makes me excited for the wearable platform in a way that I haven't been in a very long it's, time. And that's Google's design. It's the first true competition you know yeah. fitbit's the most worn fitness watch you know mm -hmm. by far and so google's acquisition of fitbit which is now closed now is going to start being part of android wear and so it makes sense for them to kind of restart for sure uh, where it's no longer wear os it's just wear uh, that was the only really new product that i saw there are a number of new and, technologies and, and, the, and the android design was was the only other new and the technology. new material was, design was all speculative yeah which they was, which uh, they call material u material u because it is for you, 
<laughs> I'm really curious to see exactly what they mean by all of the devices following that design language. Like the idea of, like I don't have a Nest thermostat, so I don't know how how like customizable the UI is on a Nest thermostat, but a Nest Hub well, has a I'll, color background. I guess, right? But but I mean, if but if that's changeable, like I don't know. I'm very curious to see like will how the, will the Nest thermostat adapt to the wallpaper on your smartphone exactly, or like, what? Yeah, that's that's kind of an interesting well, the concept. wallpaper in your house. <laughs> but you, ra yeah, yeah, you raised that that good point, Jeff, which is nobody wants. To, you know, theming's been around since the beginning of GUIs, but nobody wants to spend any time theming. No, not many do. Right. So I think if if it if it guesses what you're going to like, so this is this becomes, you know, before Google guesses, here's what your search result ought to be, or here's the thing you want to buy. Now it guesses your aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and and do you feel more ownership of that aesthetic because it's yours without the trouble? That's going right. to be the challenge, but it is interesting. Uh, um, uh, another product Google, I guess a product Google announced was the addition of Smart Canvas to uh, Google uh, work, Workspace. I, it wasn't clear if Smart Canvas will be part of, the, of all Google Docs. I got the feeling it might be, but it's really designed to be... A, a business for focused uh, way of working together and is very reminiscent. We'll have to ask Gina Trapani about it, but yeah. very reminiscent of Google wave. Uh, you embed little chunk, little blocks in a document that it can include things like to-do lists, but also people's live video and various other things. I, it, it's very much like Google wave. And I have the feeling that they probably just, you know, revitalized the Google wave platform for that. Wasn't that right, kind the of whole notion of embedding? Uh, which kind of kind of died with Wave. Can, it does make sense and comes back here. Yeah, it might be Wave was just ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. You know, now we yeah. have computing as was platforms Gmail. that can do it. But as, Google yeah. Plus was kind of the next, the next phase of Wave, right? But I guess. I guess this just seems more like Wave, more more like the Wave of old. But well, Wave was yeah. really about document working in documents right, right. and multimodal documents, and that's exactly. Uh, what smart yeah. canvas is so mm -hmm. they showed off as they often do their ai research things like uh, the BERT model and its successor the lambda model and, right but i think and, I, and they'll get a lot of attention Mom. for that just as they did for the google duplex making reservations for you two years ago at google mm -hmm. io that took two years before it really started happening but this time oh. they didn't really have any practical application no. that you're going to hold unless you want to talk to pluto or a paper airplane it really yeah. didn't. <laughs> i always wanted to talk to a paper airplane so they did announce and this might send Ouch. tremors down the spine of the uh, password managing companies they did announce mm -hmm. improvements in chromo uh, chrome's uh, password manager it can import your password vault from other password managers uh-oh uh, it's going to be cross-platform on Chrome, uh, on Android, as well as on the desktop and Chrome OS. There will be password alerts, and Google can help you change your passwords or fix your passwords automatically. So those are all things, you know, and of course, it'll do the password generation and remembering passwords. So right. those are all things that uh, commercial pass, third-party password managers offer. Um, the big difference is cross-platform. I mean, Apple has basically a password manager that's Apple only. Google will now have a password manager that's Chrome only. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious to to um, to check that out. I, I for whatever reason though, I've continued to use third party password managers, thinking that Google's solution isn't as secure. And I don't know right. why I feel that way. I don't know if this changes that. I want to play around with it and see. Yeah, we also got some numbers uh, as we always do at Google I/O. Three billion Android devices. That's a good number. That's a big number. Another billion. Another Couldn't billion. Couldn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Apple has uh, announced at its last event a billion iPhones in active use. So, three billion. So, but remember, Gita. Android is not just Pixel devices. Right. Oh, yes. And in fact, it includes a lot of $50 Android phones that really <laughs> don't add much to the ecosystem except um, security vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so Leo, uh, Benedict Evans, who I quote often on Twig, said that there are three billion Android devices, 90% of those are phones. Apple has a billion plus iPhones. There are another seven to eight hundred uh, million, I guess, Android phones in China. So the total global base is now over four point five billion out of five point seven to five point eight billion adults on Earth. We're we're conquering that. You know, we're we're, wow. we're the next is the last billion. Literally. Yeah, Finally. right. Wow. Well, we got to go right to the end. We're we're going to make sure that every single person on this Earth has. <laughs> is covered at some point embedded That's, in them yes embedded in google entirely 
had someone in the chat say that the Android 12 beta is up and it does appear. I just did a refresh. So now if you go to google.com slash Android slash beta, um, and I believe if you do that on your phone, you'll be able to, you know, it'll recognize that you're doing it like on your Pixel if you have one, um, and it will offer up the right version. So you do need to do it on the phone then, not... Uh, uh, well, that's a good question. If I, I don't do it see it the, on my webpage, but maybe I have to do a hard refresh of something. Yeah, kind. so I just... No, um, it still says uh, Android It tells 11. me on the webpage, on it yours? tells me uh, your eligible devices. Maybe that's because I'm on Linux. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that might Which, do by it. by the way, Android's based on. But okay, okay, if that's, what you, right. if that's how you want to play it, Google. Confirm and enroll. The other uh, thing they announced, which was perhaps less brand worthy is that Google's TV OS is on 80 million uh, devices, which is, I guess, a lot. Um, it's certainly more than Apple TV, but that includes TVs that have uh, TV OS built in as well as Google's own uh, uh, dongle devices. Mm -hmm. They talked about some uh, features in Android Auto, including digital car key, which will be available using the Pixel and the Galaxy phones on BMW <laughs> this fall. Uh, um Let's see, what else? Um, I'm just, I mean, the photos added a couple of new features, one of which, little patterns, looks kind of interesting. Yeah. It's going to look for little repeating patterns in your existing photos, things like an orange backpack, and then make a, an album of those. That could, That's potentially terrifying. Yeah. It just depends the on what the little, pattern. little yeah, what, pattern what is, is. Yes, it depends on the pattern <laughs> yeah. that Google is recognizing. As Jeff <laughs> pointed out, picking the, your nose is not uh, one that the you The angry want. face pattern. Yeah. You know? Gee, you seemed unhappy in all these photos. <laughs> Are you just in general unhappy? Because you look like it a lot. This is your resting face, we can tell you. <laughs> also, uh, the ability, and I think it's looked kind of creepy when they demoed it, which means it'll really be creepy when yeah, we get it, right. to interpolate photos if you take multiple photos at once, kind of a burst mode thing, which many people do. I always take three or four photos of the yep. same thing. It will then note that and, and provide in intermediate frames to give you kind of a weird morphing effect it did not look very good kind I of a motion effect yeah. which which is actually very similar to when you take a photo like on my pixel when i take a number of photos sometimes it has that one i can't remember what they call it live photo it or does whatever. it'll do a gif out it, of and it, it does a gif, a gif out of the yeah. actual motion this is yeah. like creating the motion right. between two photos right. and, and apple of course has live that. photos because right. it's always taking pictures and actually that's a better way to do it uh if you leave live photos on an iphone you'll get little mini movies of every picture uh you take uh, and of course, we took a, a look at, as I think as we mentioned, that the new uh, the new look on the uh, uh, Android 12, which has already been widely reported. It is as reported, yeah. Material U. Ooh, U. Yeah, Material U. U which, yeah, like like we we talked about, uh, a customization that um, ultimately seems like it's going to be hitting a lot more than just Android phones. But on Android 12, a big update. You know, it's a lot of the controls. The colors, the sizing of these controls, uh, unique shapes, and everything—all kind of tied into, let's say, the the change of a um, a wallpaper, that sort of thing. Right. And I think I think the success of that, uh, what I'm really curious about, you know, again ties back to what you, what you were worried about, Jeff. If it can be something that is relatively seamless, that doesn't require me to go in right. and face like five pages of, of tweaks and 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 uh, controls. Then I'm totally in because, quite frankly, I just don't have the time to like customize. And if well, I don't have the time, most people don't have yeah. the time. So nobody wants. How to many? Customize. How many? How many? My Yahoos were were abandoned. After yeah, one right. Attempt, you know. <laughs> I forgot to mention one feature in, in uh, Android Photos that uh, maybe a lot of people appreciate, which is a new secure vault where you can store the photos you don't want anybody else. Mm -hmm. To see, we'll see. You know, photo it, of your driver's license. Is it cryptographically secure from Google right. as well? I mean, you know, details were scant throughout. All of this details were scant, and not because they had so many things to announce, but just because it they felt like they were just kind of talking about the highlights of of things coming up. Mm -hmm. um, they did give us a fairly painful uh, tour of the Google AI uh, <laughs> Quantum AI campus, uh, featuring uh, comedy stylings of Michael Pena. Um, other than that, uh, and then and Sundar Pichai spent some time, and actually, I think it was pretty encouraging, showing how not only is Google uh, currently carbon neutral, and they have been for some years, but they're hoping to have all of the energy used by all the Google uh, operation centers and, and campuses be um, generated by uh, renewables by 2030, which is good news. Yeah, Emission-free, 
Although, as Kevin Marks pointed out in a blog post in 2006, you probably emit more carbon breathing while you're doing a Google search than Google does. Google can't so, replace your, your breath. He suggested but. you hold your breath while you do your Google searches if you really <laughs> want to help Google be carbon neutral. Uh I, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I would love, I would love to have seen a new Pixel Six. I was really excited about the notion of Google not only refreshing the design but doing their own systems on the chip. Yeah. We know they're going to do that. Yep. Uh, but I guess they're not going to do that today. I wish I'd seen just kind of a new direction for operating systems: Android, Chrome, Fuchsia, et cetera. But yeah. Nothing there. Nothing. Yeah. No mention of Fuchsia at all. Yeah. No mention of Flutter, oh, although that will be probably saved for a later. Uh, yeah, that's probably up next in the development. Yeah. Keynote. Um, well, I guess that's it. No, and no pixel book yep. for you, uh, Jeff Jarvis. Nope, I'm sorry. Nope, nope, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm crying myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to wait another year or something. Uh, no, well, no, my, my machine ain't going to wait. So I've got to figure out what to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, we will monitor the rest of the day and uh, the rest of the week for Google IO. And if there's any breaking news, we'll talk about it tomorrow with you, Jeff and Stacey Higginbotham and Aunt Pruitt on this week in Google. Thank you for being here, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's really nice to. And so I'm so jealous you guys are together in a room. I know. What it's like. Ooh, <laughs> actually, ooh, I'm not we actually here. should have put a piece of wood in between us. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm not actually <laughs> here. I'm a light field. Uh, I'm a light field screen. <laughs> but uh, we got there before Google. Yeah. Really <laughs> Very funny. realistic, I must, I must say. Uh, thank you, Jeff Jarvis. We'll see you uh, tomorrow on uh, This Week in Google. Thank I'm you, glad Jeff. you wore the old Google I.O. shirt. It's funny because for years... We would get an email from Google saying you get two invitations and then the battle would be on between Jeff and Jason and everybody else to see who got to go to Google. Look, he's got his old Google I.O. box. Yeah. Oh, this, Do you is, have... this, is the, this is the box. Oh, that's the new oh, one. You got two. It's the new one. And then, and then you got a couple of pins. Oh, nice. I, uh, I'm not going to wear it on my blazer. Which ones did, oh. and then did you I get got, a box too? I did. I got a box. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I got nice. different pins than what you got. Oh, I, I had an F cup. for Flutter. Oh, that's nice. Which you can't really see. It has the I.O. white on it. For years, wow. it's a ceramic. The, the Google I.O. invite was hot because you would get stuff like laptops and phones. Yeah. Like yeah. real yeah. valuable stuff. Now you get a, a sweatshirt, plastic stuff. cup and a sweatshirt. Yeah, I mean, the, the, well, I mean, it doesn't matter much, but the cup is actually pretty nice ceramic oh, on the inside. Oh, right. um, my go. wife uses it this morning and she loves it. It's a so good cup. there you go. It's a, it's good, a good cup. cup. Thank you, Google, for the cup. Jason Howell will have, of course, much more to talk about tonight on All About Android. You will bet. Flo and Ron be there with you? Yeah, as far as I know, Flo and Ron. And then um, we have uh, Michael Wolfson, who is a Google developer expert. He joins us every year for the Google I.O. recap, either pre or post, because he's always in town for Google I.O. It's just a tradition that we've had for years. So he's nice. going on as well. That should be Are you going to have the OS installed by then? I, I, You know, I keep refreshing. I opted in. And I keep waiting for the notification that says, all right, we're going to push it out to you, but I haven't gotten wow, it yet. They're probably getting the slammed right now. So yeah. sometime in the next couple of hours, yeah. I'm sure I'll get yeah. that. But yes, that's my plan. Good. Uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for uh, All About Android tonight. And of course, Thursday, uh, you and uh, Micah will... I'm sure be talking about uh, any news that comes out uh, yeah. from Google. Yeah, I'm sure, this week. I'm sure there will be some, Tech uh, news some new stuff to, to catch up on as well. Thank you all for joining us for uh, what turned out to be somewhat anti- <laughs> It was so completely more anti, exciting. But yeah. uh, Google I.O. Keynote. I'm Leo Laporte. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.